It's the final game of this three-game series between the Yankees and the Blue Jays. And how about those Toronto Blue Jays? They are back in first place now, a game ahead of the Detroit Tigers. The Tigers have lost three in a row in Milwaukee. Well, the Blue Jays have won two in a row here against the New York Yankees in what was supposed to be their toughest series of the year. Today, John Cerruti will be going to the mound for Toronto. Left-hander Steve Trout for the Yankees. Now let's go up top. Here's Don Chevrier and Tony Kubek. And Fergie, Sparky Anderson called it just about right. He said if the Yankees were to retain a chance at all, they'd have to win at least two of three and sweep the Blue Jays. They're not going to do that virtually out of the race. As to the Tigers, they're finding Milwaukee oh so tough as the Blue Jays did earlier. But the attitude in the Blue Jay locker room, calm, determined, much like 85, Tony. I guess it's too remote of a possibility to talk of an all-Canada World Series at this time. Montreal, just three games behind the Cardinals. Toronto, the best record in baseball. It's not too early to start talking about manager of the year. Buck Rogers will be a big contender for that with Roger Craig. What about Jimmy Williams? He's made some tough, tough and unpopular decisions, but he's stuck with him. Jimmy is managing actively with the changes he's made. You've seen that in recent weeks. The whole Blue Jay organization very much involved in a hot pennant race. So are we. Stay with us on CTV. Welcome back to Exhibition Stadium for this afternoon's final game with the Yankees here in Toronto this season as the Blue Jays have won the first two and Blue Jay manager Jimmy Williams uh, you've really been on the hot seat lately because you've made some gutsy moves you've taken Dave Steeb out of the starting rotation you're using kids in the lineup uh, called up from Syracuse and I know it's Jimmy Williams decision and nobody else's well there's certain things I think he feel like you have to do Fergie and like you mentioned they're not easy decisions but certainly if you feel within yourself that it's going to help the ball club to make those decisions and and uh, use different people to help you win and that's what you're going to do. What's the real reason you took Steve out of the lineup. Well we just felt with a four man rotation uh, three left handers facing Detroit uh, New York Milwaukee that we would be a better ball club and in talking to those people that were involved. Uh, with four or five starts on three days rest, they felt they could handle it. But here's a guy who's won 13 ball games for you. It's just my decision. I have to live with it, and uh, we'll just have to see what happens. You see a guy like Dwayne Ward comes out of the bullpen yesterday, strikes out the side in the ninth inning. Uh, he's contributed in other ball games too. Certainly, uh, you know, Jimmy Key was right around 100 pitches, like we talked about before. We're going on, on three days rest with the four-man rotation. David Wells has contributed, and several other young kids too. Jose Nunez, even though he's been here all year long. Whatever you've done so far, it's right. You're a game in front. We have a good ball club, and I think our our players really feel good about themselves right now. All right, thank you. Good luck. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on CTV. Manager Lou Pinella, winning's the name of the game, and right now you're behind the eight ball. What's happened? Well, we've had injuries uh, this year uh, that certainly haven't helped us. Uh, early in the year, it was with the everyday lineup, uh, and now all of a sudden, it's hit our pitching staff. Uh, they're part of the game, but they certainly uh, haven't helped our ball club uh, play as well as it possibly can all year. And uh, you know, uh, none of the teams in this division uh, are deep enough or, or strong enough uh, that they can sustain the type of injuries that we had uh, and, 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 and and be as competitive as we would like. Is Steinbrenner putting any heat on? No, he hasn't put any heat on. Uh, I'm the manager of the ball club. Uh, I put out the lineup. Uh, I do basically what I want with the ball club, and uh, we're just trying to finish out the season as well as we can, and uh, uh, hopefully uh, start uh, winning the day. We've got Milwaukee coming in uh, next week, and uh, Toronto coming uh, in the New York, and we'd like to beat both those ball clubs. But uh, no, I don't have any heat. Lou, what's your gut feeling? Will you be back in New York next year? I don't know. I haven't thought about it. Uh, what I'd like to do is see this ball club play well the uh, next uh, three weeks of the season, and uh, uh, then uh, whatever happens to me uh, can be determined then. Uh, I'm signed for the next year, so uh, uh, whatever happens, happens. Uh, I felt like I've done a good job here as manager for the two years I've had. Uh, last year, uh, we had a, a staff uh, that was decimated by injuries as far as our pitching was concerned. This year, we've had injuries again, so... Uh, to have the club in contention like I've had it uh, all year, uh, I don't feel uh, bad about the job I've done at all. And he shouldn't. He really has done a good job. As you look at John Cerruti, 
Starting for the Toronto Blue Jays, a record of 10 and 3. He's faced the Yankees a couple of times this year. One win, one no decision. Roberto Kelly leads it off in center field. And Willie Randolph, Don Mattingly bats third at first base. Winfield the DH or the right fielder in the four spot. Ricky Henderson, who was the DH, is in left field today. And Gary Ward gets that role. Mike Pagliarulo is the third. Rick Cerrone, the catcher, hits eight. Then Bobby Meacham, the shortstop, hitting in the number nine spot. Tony? You're looking at the best balanced team and this is just part of it, the defense in all of Major League Baseball. You look at that outfield, which has been raved about by writers all over the continent. Kelly Gruber with the versatility of Mullix behind him, if you need him. Fernandez Liriano with that great speed and acrobatic brilliance at second. Fielder to platoon with Upshaw. Charlie Moore to spell Red Hot Ernie Witt. And John Cerruti, who just coincidentally is five wins, no losses against the Eastern Division. And isn't that nice when you have a guy like can dominate the division that you got to beat? Yet in terms of decisions, you have to go back to August the 24th when he beat the Mariners in Seattle by a score of 7-3. to three. His last outing was in Milwaukee in the Blue Jays' 5-3 win on the first game of that series on Monday. He did not get a decision there. But a guy with a very resilient arm, he can start for you and on fairly short notice come right back out of the bullpen. So he is one part of the thinking of Jimmy Williams forming this four-man rotation. And of course, you get Dave Steep down there and it has been controversial as Fergie said when he talked to Jimmy you get some help in the bullpen some experience a guy that can come in and strike people out take some pressure off both Icorn and Musselman who's got the tired shoulder and a little bit off Tom Hankey also look at this crowd today fanning out they expect it will be in excess of the 45,600 odd who were here yesterday the Yankees and the Tigers the big draws right now and the big story along with the Blue Jays in the American League East. Roberto Kelly spent much of the year in Columbus. He leads off today for the Yankees. One of the rare occasions that Lupinella hasn't gone with uh, his two aces off the top. Ricky Henderson then Willie Randolph. Baltimore and Boston have been rained out today. And that game is good news of that rain out for the Toronto Blue Jays. It means that tomorrow when the Tigers go into Boston, they will face Roger Clemens. But Detroit is a hot pitcher starting two in Doyle Alexander. The count to Kelly is 2-0. and oh. Kelly has outstanding speed. He stole 51 bases in the minor leagues this year. There's three steals without being caught since he became a Yankee. He's got a trace of power, and Lou Pinella, realistically, he will tell you he has not given up, but the chances are very remote that the Yankees could come back. The three teams to jump over, but he's going to try some kids out now. Kelly cuts it foul, two and two. In fact, as I have suspected all along, I strongly feel now that Milwaukee will finish ahead of the Yankees and relegate New York to fourth place. The Brewers today sending a fine pitcher, Chris Basio, against Walt Terrell of the Tigers, and they're looking for a sweep of that four-game series. And, of course, the game is at Milwaukee's County Stadium, and Walt Terrell with his 13 wins. Almost all of them have come in his home park in Detroit. He has difficulty winning on the road for some unknown reason. But Sparky can't afford that luxury of just starting it at home. Kelly strikes out. Saruti gets the first man. He'll pitch to Willie Randolph now, a first ball fastball hitter by tradition. There have been a lot of people through the farm system of the Blue Jays, managers and pitching coach, who've said to John Saruti, you've got to use your fastball more. Now, this happens to be a forkball, I believe. But finally, after a couple of years, John has listened to the old curmudgeon Al Whitmire, and he's using his fastball more, which has made his forkball and little quick breaking ball a lot better. Would I know that you're calling him an old curmudgeon? Ah, man. <laughs> He's something. Uh, you, you talk about geniuses in the ball game. There's one right there. You bet. He will take what a pitcher has got, refine it, add to it, not change the pitcher completely unless he's hopeless. You know, there are a lot of people, and I, sometimes a pitching coach is much more valuable than even a manager. Once the manager sets his lineup, there's some strategy decision, but that pitching coach has got to work with those pitchers every day and have input almost throughout a ball game. A strike taken by Randolph. It is one and two now. He's having a sensational year despite missing, what, a month or more after the All-Star game with knee problems. 51 RBIs. That is his second highest single season total. He had 61 in 1979. He's got a chance to surpass that now, yet having missed a month. Cracks this down to the third baseman. Gruber backs up. Good hard throw to Fielder and Randolph who comes to second out. You can still see Willie still limping considerably. He needs to re-strengthen that knee after the surgery. I mean, the Yankees are at the state of depression and with George Steinbrenner beating on him so much. But Willie is really depressed. 
He feels his loss really hurt the ball club. Montreal. Well, they're not Chicago. depressed, are they? The Expos. They got a chance. Three games out. The Mets' frustration continues against St. Louis. They got hammered yesterday, having lost the first game in extra innings on Friday night. A must-win for the Mets, I'd say today. Bryn Smith. Pitching for Montreal against Rick Sutcliffe of the Cubs, and Sutcliffe has struggled with a finger injury since the All-Star game. The Mets have David Cohen against Danny Cox of the Cardinals. If you're interested in pitching matchups, one of the reasons the pitching matchups Jimmy Williams went to three left-handers starting in this series was this man, Don Mattingly. Well, and Pagliarulo, he's having a big, big year. You take a little bit of his power away. Mattingly third. His RBI production is going down. He won't admit it, but after the bad back earlier when he was on the DL, he's also got a wrist and hand injury, so he's had to cut down the swing. He's not driving the ball as well, but he won't use it as an excuse. The count is two and one. Jimmy's strategy as to Mattingly was perfect yesterday. Don was 0 for 4. On Friday night, though, wasn't so good. He was 3 for 6. <laughs> two and two to Mattingly right now. Sometimes I think John Saprudi su su surprises himself how hard he really throws. Uh, he really has regained and it started in spring training. A little bit more confidence in his fastball. I mean, he's not throwing 90 miles an hour, but at times he'll get the ball in the upper 80s. Good movement, a very effective fastball when he uses it. Tries it there to Mattingly, and he gets a piece of it. Two and two, holding on the count to him. Crowd still coming in. Enormous traffic problems around the exhibition grounds today. And it will surely be in the 45,000 plus range this afternoon. A humid afternoon, but a pleasant day under partly cloudy skies. How many years ago was it when Steve Garvey was a Dodger when he referred to the as the Chavez Ravine crowd as the 25th man? Yeah. And I heard that expression today. I think it was Rance Mullix who, in the midst of a card game way before the ball game, said, We got our 25th man right here in Exhibition Stadium. Of course, they talk about Minnesota, who could be in the playoffs with Toronto or against Detroit or maybe Milwaukee. But they I don't have that so. 25th man in Minnesota. Mattingly fights Cerruti and wins the battle to keep the inning alive for the Yankees. That's what he and the Boggs is, and George Brett, when he's healthy, do so well. They fouled George Bell. They foul off the good pitches. He fouled a couple of good fastballs. Then Cerruti comes to him, gets the ball a little bit over the plate, and Mattingly jumps on it. High a little bit inside. He just fought it and won it. So Dave Winfield steps in now. Who, after a long struggle after playing all those innings in the All-Star game, has gotten his bat hot again. He'll get 100 RBIs again before this is over with. He's had a good week. One for three yesterday, a run driven in. Three for five Friday, two for four Wednesday, four for five on Monday against Boston. 1-0 is the cap to Winfield. 90 runs driven in for the Yankees this year. George Steinbrenner. Uh, Pretty much directly blames Dr. Bobby Brown for the slump after the All-Star game. He's the league president for not picking enough outfielders for the All-Star game and forcing Winfield to play that extra inning game. There wasn't another outfielder left. So in all the notes, some say that George had them do it every ball game since the All-Star game when he played all the innings. Dave Winfield has hit dot, 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 like a little over 200, although he's hot now. Takes a strike, it is two and one. He certainly qualifies for the show he appeared on last night, Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous, Dave Winfield. One of the best contracts ever negotiated. Is he making two million a year, thereabouts, just like Jimmy Rice, Mike Schmidt, Mattingly just shy of that? They cancel tag days for all of them. You know, if all those guys are making that kind of money, what is George Bell worth off his year? What is Andre Dawson worth off his year where he had almost 50 home runs? And George has got a chance at that. George is struggling with a measly, what, 1.2 million? Yeah. But you're right, it's all relative, and uh, he deserves the top rate in baseball, whatever the level might be. checking out Mattingly at first base with Ricky, two gone. Ricky Henderson, when the count finally got the two balls and two strikes with two outs, finally came into the on-deck circle. He had what looked like a massive press conference. <laughs> Apparently, we think, unhappy. He's hitting in the fifth spot, not leading off. He's only two shy of the major league record by Bobby Bonds for leadoff hitter, hitting a home run. But they wanted the speed of Kelly up there. He's still toying with that bad leg. So he took it off a long time to come out, didn't he? He did. He's not the itchy today. He's actually playing a position left field. But hitting fifth. 
You can understand Lou's thinking in his situation. He's got to shake that lineup up, even if it means disrupting a Randolph or a Henderson. In this case, Rookie gets moved down and Kelly leads off. Well, Ricky may want be one of those on the trade block during the offseason. See what he can bring in return. Kids like Jay Buhner, close to being ready. Roberto Kelly, close to being ready, coming off the Columbus roster. Anything about Rookie, when it comes to hitting triples, you'd think that he would be a natural, but it only comes from his bat once every 30 at bats. There's the flip to Loriano. Great fluff ball by Saruti. And that'll do it for the Yankees. Wasting their only hit. The Blue Jays coming to bat on the Bats Blue Jays baseball and CTV. Well, the Yankees went fishing for pitching help in Chicago and came up with Trout. Steve is the first name, but he has not done very well in the New York uniform. 0 and 4 with a 619 earned run average is the groans surround me. Well, Trout not pitching to Steve Lake today as he did back in the Chicago Cup days, but he'll pitch to Cerrone and he will face Nelson Liriano, then Lloyd Mosby, Tony Fernandez doing a good job in the three slot, George Bell. Left field. Cecil Fielder backing up George Bell in the five spot. Then Jesse Barfield in right. Juan Beniquez, who's helped out already against left-handed pitchers, DHing. Kelly Gruber at third. And Charlie Moore, the catcher. Trout's trouble has been walks, wildness. He was incredibly wild a while ago. They weren't even sure he could use him. They could use him, but he settled down a lot better now. And you'll know early how well he's going to do. His trouble will show up early in a ball game. As you see the defensive support behind Steve Trout. Anderson Kelly and Winfield in the outfield. Pagliarulo meets him Randolph Mattingly with Cerrone catching. I don't think manager Lou Pinella really wanted to start Steve Trout today. No. Uh, he brought a fellow from Columbus Al Leiter. As soon as he saw him, he saw he had a blister on his hand and couldn't pitch. So Trout, the one available, and he is thrown in the pitch. Just when he pitches well, and there's good games, and he had two shutouts before he left the comps. He'll get you 15 to 20 ground ball outs of the game, but he couldn't even throw a strike in batting practice after a while. Uh, he wanted to use Gullickson. That would have meant taking a day's rest away from him. Well, Mariano greets him with a base hit to left. And that'll bring up center fielder Lloyd Mosby. You've always hit against the New York Yankees. What is it? Something special about that team? No, not really. I think it's always a couple of clubs that you hit well, and I think New York is a club that I hit well. But I think uh, the main reason is that, you know, um, most of the time we do play them in, uh, in tough situations and, and tough times of the year, and I just like to think that I'm the type of player I like to come around when the time is right. Jays now five and three against the Yankees. Ironically, Toronto swept the Yanks in New York. New York returned the compliment here, and the Jays, of course, have won the first two in this series. Those are pretty good offensive numbers, to say the least, aren't they? Best all-around year Lloyd Mosby's had when you take in his defense, his throwing, power numbers, average. But you keep looking at Lloyd as he takes ball one. Year after year now as a 30-30 candidate. Only eight in the history of Major League Baseball have made that club, but he's eight homers shy. The stolen bases most surely will get him there, but the home runs, you'll be eight shy. He is right now. You know, those numbers sound so good, but to me, they're many times just playing with numbers. If they had let Henry Aaron run, how many times do you think he could have been in the 40-40 club and Henry Aaron had great speed? Or Willie Mays. He was 30-30 once. We're talking of home runs and stolen bases. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking about, a, you know, if they had let Aaron, I mean, he hit 40 home runs how many times? Eight, nine, ten? He wasn't a running player, and it wasn't a running era. So uh, Henry Aaron deprived of that chance because the game was played differently, and he didn't play an artificial surface. So 30-30 is good, and they talk about 50-50 or 40-40 for Eric Davis from Cincinnati, but... They're letting guys run more, so they get those numbers. Still strikes me as strange that only eight players in the entire history of the game have done that. Only Bobby one infielder. Bonds did it five times. Only one infielder. Howard Johnson. This year became the eighth, an unlikely candidate going into this season. This is what Liriano does so well, even against a left-handed veteran like Trout. He's got him thinking about a stolen base. When they got Trout, it gave the Yankees too much of a sameness to their pitching staff. You want left-handers in Yankee Stadium, but all of a sudden you've got Rigetti and Clements out of the bullpen. They had Holland for a while, another left-hander. You've got Tommy John, Guidry. You had Rasmussen before he went over to Cincinnati. You had Trout. And hitters are looking at the same kind of pitching every series. 
sooner or later backs up on you. I have a theory about Rick Roden, the guy they acquired from Pittsburgh, was such a great start for the Yankees, but now the second time around, he's not as effective as he was earlier. That yeah, can always happen when you change been, leagues. He's been pitching with a bad shoulder for at least a month, and he's tried to pitch through it. Mosby popping it up. A chance, and the catch is made by Pat Yarulo. One down for Tony Fernandez. And we've talked about the outstanding speed, although Tony has been slowed by that lingering knee problem of the top three hitters now in this Blue Jay lineup. Mariano, Mosby, and Fernandez all hitting in front of the power of George Bell. I think it's interesting when they talk about George Bell and Jack Clark of the Cardinals as being the leading candidates in the MVP department, but they say if Tony Fernandez and Ozzie Smith, the Cardinals made shorts, not the two best in the game, without them, we would not be able to win it. Doesn't, aren't they saying in a way that they're the most valuable player in the ball club? I mean, they all say, hey, we, we, without yeah. Jack Clark, we can get by, and they have this weekend. He missed both games, and they beat the Mets twice. You could interpret it that way, surely. When you put, a, you, you put defense in its proper perspective and on-base average and all else and not just focusing on power numbers, you certainly got to consider Tony Fernandez and Ozzie Smith as far as ballots cast for MVP. While I would love to see a Blue Jay Expo World Series, I would probably just as much like to see the St. Louis Cardinals play the Jays. I think it would be one of the most memorable series of all time, given the talent, the speed on both clubs, the variables. Great matchup. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of baseball to be played yet, including a championship series, before we get to that stage. Three weeks' worth of the regular schedule, and ends three weeks from the day. Tony Fernandez with a 1-0 cap, one out, Luriano, big threat to steal. He's six for six at first base. You talk about MVP balling, you talk about consistency over 162 games. Tony's hit over 300 right-handed and over 300 left-handed. 327 overall. 2-0. Oh. McLaren perhaps with a green light for Liriano if he feels he can get a good jump. Two outs. One out. You may want to get him in scoring position. Break up the infield with Tony from the right side. 2-0, and oh, not as good a pitch to run on, although it's a possibility, as 2-1. 2-0, and, one. Two and oh, you'd like your hitter to pick his pitch and drive the ball for extra bases. And the runner going, he might cut down his swing. It might distract him. Now it is 3-0. This has been Trout's problem. Wildness, falling behind, walking people, especially in the early going. And he sends Fernandez down to first base on his first pass of the day. And perhaps the scouting reports have gotten around on Trout, and they're saying, hey, he is most affected when he is from the knees to the ankles, and those are balls, lay off. And if you make him get the ball mid-thigh, it's when he gets hurt. Yeah, he's been wild low as much or more than wild high. He's been pretty classy throughout all this turmoil. Yes, he has. He's had his explosion on occasion because he's got a volatile temper, but he hasn't responded back to George Steinbrenner's charges. He hasn't gotten a, that kind of contest with Mr. Steinbrenner. George Bell. Bouncing back after a tough start to the Milwaukee series, taking a pitch on the nose. Came back the next day and hasn't missed a beat since. He can no longer call me Pinocchio anymore, as he calls me in his Latin American dialect. I can call him that after he got hit in the nose. Yeah, if he hadn't told a <laughs> tiny little fib on Monday morning, he might not have got hit. <laughs> Mark Connors, the pitching coach out. Sure, he along with the other coaches wondering if he calls you they Pinocchio. Will be Pinocchio. He's a Pinocchio. Pinocchio. Well, that's not the same as Pinocchio, then, <laughs> I hope. <laughs> Probably a legendary great from the Dominican named Pinocchio. Great ball player. Yeah. So George, if you judge your nose smacked as many times as I had, they'd call you Pinocchio, too. Like there he is. He's carried this ball club the all year long with the bat. But Wire's up there with him, though. Third base goes Fernandez. Loriano makes it one nothing Toronto. Bell's 120th run batted in. And this is not a free kit for George. This is planned. He knows a sinker baller keeps the ball down. He's trying to get a ground ball to 
Second base are the left side, get a double play, and George says, I'm gonna take that shot the opposite way, and George is not just a hacker, he's a free swinger, but he's a very thoughtful hitter, and he picked the pitch that was down and went the other way to get the ball off the ground. Allows you to wait just a split second longer going the opposite way, and you can get more loft on the ball, and he drives in another one. Hi to Cecil Fielder, the first baseman this afternoon, against the left-hander Trout. Was it last week down where they were trying to get Trout back on the beam? Mark Connors took him down to the bullpen. Had Rick Cerrone stand in to pitch to a hitter, and he ended up hitting Rick Cerrone. Couldn't throw strikes in the pen even. That is out of play. They might do better if they had Rick Cerrone pitching to Steve Trout. He's pitched a couple of innings in lappers for the Yankees. A reminder of the copyright involving this telecast. Any use without permission is prohibited. Well, see, Vance Law has been in about three ball games. His fastball has been timed better than the major league average of 85 miles an hour. Vance Law with an entire family whose names start with V. What was the dog's name? Can't remember. Started with a V. It was run over by a Volkswagen, I remember. It was sad. <laughs> Two and one is the count to Cecil Fielder. Fielder up at the plate trying to do the same thing. With Randolph shading towards second, a man on trying to hit the ball the other way. That's why they tried to bury the breaking ball low and then make him pull the ball. He'll go the other way again. <laughs> Three and one. Trout struggle continues. Jays with a run already and a couple of base runners to work with with just one out here in the home first. And the Yankees bullpen going already. Not a happy sight for Lou Pinella. They have to start them that soon. Charles Hudson, who had a great start, went down to Columbus on the shuttle bus. A long way into right center field. Off the wall. Fielder almost took it out of here, but he's going to score two runs. He clears the bases with a double of the Jays' lead, 3 nothing. So the Toronto bats are booming hard and early on Steve Trout. Toronto Blue Jays offense, they are fourth in the American League in run scored. Detroit, Milwaukee, and the Rangers ahead of them. But all of a sudden, the Blue Jays' bats have begun to boom against this soft Yankee pitching. Surprisingly, the Yankee pitching, they're fourth or fifth right around there in the league in ERA. It's been the hitting that has really suffered this year. That's over the season, but that's a little misleading in terms of their recent performance, certainly. Not a good road trip for the Yankees. Not a good month of September. Barfield takes ball one. I tell you, you made the point earlier about Trout being down in the strike zone. The Blue Jays well coached to look for that, not only for balls, but that's what uh, Fielder looked for and got. He did not miss a home run by very much. Every hitter Trout has faced, he started him off with the ball. This time, Barfield, a 2 0 count. And Jimmy Talk Williams. Talk to him, yeah, Lou. Get the catcher out there. Sorrell goes to the mound. Buy a little time for Hudson to get loosened up. Jimmy Williams continues, and he started this way back in April. He let the team know way back in spring training he was going to try and rest them. Then they got Benitez and Charlie Moore to, to help increase their efficiency against left-handed pitchers. He's used fielder. He's used the kids. It really wasn't a very good trade, as it turned out, for the Cubs and the Yankees, because Bob Tewksbury has been hurt. He hasn't been able to pitch for them. And, oh, uh, yeah, but they got two young arms that are more oh, valuable yeah. than Tewksbury that went down, two of the best young arms in the minor leagues. Got the side and Wilkins. Yep. For the oh, future. They got a chance in a couple of years to be good pitchers for the Chicago Cubs. And that's what the Cubs traded for. Not this year. So really, it's a bad trade, present and future for the Yankees. At least that's the way it looks now. 3-0. Oh. Now the Yankees made them. The worst deal they made was not making any at all, and that's getting Jack Morris, but nobody else wanted him either. Jeff Torberg, he's up to the booth with Stan Williams. The pitching coach sets some defenses. Charles Hudson should be ready. Looks like a football coach with a headset on down there. That's a wireless <laughs> remote unit he's wearing. Barfield gets the second walk of the inning for the Blue Jays, who will send their seventh man up in a moment, Juan Beniquez. Just one out, and Lou is beside himself. He said, what else can go wrong? Well, Nelson Liriano was the one who started off with the base hit to left, a couple of walks.
George Bell brought a run home, fielder a couple home. Yesterday it was 13 to 1. A Blue Jay Rob, are we headed that way again today? Too soon to tell, depending if they make a pitching change and Charlie Hudson can shut down the Blue Jays. But right now, Trout's got his hands full. Every batter now, this is number seven. He started with a ball. It's almost a shame because Trout's been a good pitcher, wasn't the National League, and not happy with the pressure of this and the burden that was put on his shoulder that he was going to be the one to get him over the hump, and that'll be it for Steve. Here's Lou. Yes, sir, Charlie Hudson. You get in here, see what you can do. Hudson's had a strange season, a tremendous start as you talked about, and then all of a sudden, bingo, they pulled him out of the rotation, made him a relief pitcher, which didn't please him. He also had a couple of side trips uh, on the bus down to Columbus, which didn't please him either. Mm -hmm. He picked up a win here. Good relief job. Hudson, and the next thing you know, he's gone. I guess it was Boston. Next thing he was down in the minor leagues after a good relief outing. So Charles Hudson with that great arm and great delivery comes in, but some say he's too laid back. Well, he had nice laid back seven and three when he got yanked out of the starting rotation. Yeah, it's not unusual for a guy to have control problems. It's in the head usually. Steve Blass, who had the big years and pitched the World Series for the Pittsburgh Pirates, lost it completely. Joe Cowley pitched a no hitter. Now, he never had great control, but Cowley all of a sudden went home. He's going to go to the instruction league because he couldn't throw strikes after a no hitter, won no games this year after a no hitter last year. And Fergie's got a little conversation with Don Mattingly right now. Don Mattingly, you've played for a few managers in New York over the years. What kind of a job, in your opinion, has Lou Pinella done? I feel like Lou's did a good job this year. Uh, I think the players feel comfortable with Lou. Uh, we come out of spring training very, uh, very ready to play baseball, and I think we had a, a team uh, together, a uh, closeness amongst us, and, 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 and felt like we were going to win together. And, uh, you know, for what Lou's had to go through this year, I think he's done a great job. We've had a lot of injuries. We've had a lot of guys who missed games, and, uh, and he's kept us right in the race the whole year long. What about George Steinbrenner and his interference with the ball club? He's done it again this year. How much has that hurt the club? Well, we don't know. Uh, uh, it seems like there's a time every year that, that Mr. Steinbrenner gets involved, and, and you never know how much it, it affects the team. Sometimes uh, maybe it's a good effect. Maybe we start playing well. Uh, other times uh, we seem to go in a little tailspin. This year we, we seem to go in a little tailspin this year. So uh, I don't know if, if it's uh, a matter of him getting involved or we're just not playing good baseball. Well, the Yankees, when they came in here and they beat the Jays, knocked Toronto out of first place, the first three days of July, looked like they were on their way. They just couldn't sustain it. At that time, no one took the Tigers seriously, but you do now. Here's Charlie Hudson. Good record. He's got a half-decent strikeout-to-walk ratio. And he is the man they will go to now to try to stop this Blue Jay tide here in the first inning, which is threatening to drown the Yankees. Juan Beniquez, lightly used pinch hitter, DH, who today in the DH spot brings a 319 average with the Blue Jays into this game. He takes a strike. Well, you can go out and get a, get a Beniquez, and that's something that the Blue Jays have tried for several years and were interested in a lot of veteran right-handed hitters for the DH spot. But what he's done is added so much off the bench. I mean, he can play so many positions. But he's a veteran hitter who knows how to hit with men on bases. Sometimes kids are over anxious. DP. Might get them out of it. It does. Double play. So Hudson, who inherited a 2-0 cap, did a great job there. Battling back, getting Beniquez to hit into an inning-ending double play. However, the Blue Jays strike for three runs. They collect uh, three hits along the way, and the two walks didn't help Trout or the Yankees cause either. 3 nothing after one. You're watching the Bats Blue Jays baseball on CTV. A 3-0 Blue Jay jump on the Yankees in the first inning. New York here in the second. We'll start with Ricky Henderson, then Gary Ward, and Mike Pagliarulo. Talked earlier about Henderson not hitting a great many triples, but he feels he can steal third from second almost any time he wants. In fact, he has done so already in this series here. Why take the chance of getting gunned down to third? Here's the Western story, and Oakland just can't capitalize on the few misfortunes the Twins have had. Indeed, they've been few and far behind. A's trail by three and a half. The Royals by four and a half. Oakland getting a Cy Young Award candidate year from Dave Stewart, who has won 19. Yeah, he's a candidate. I'll tell you, the Roger Clemens comeback will at least put him in the running. He has had a sensational year after a late and a slow start. Burt Blylevin pitched for Minnesota today against Tom Candiotti. 
tight to Henderson. It is one and one to Ricky. Zero for four yesterday. Two for four on Friday. He's been back for ten games since coming off the DL September the first, hitting at a 286 plus since then. Behind the count now one and two. And when October rolls around, he most likely will lose that stolen base title he's had for seven consecutive years. Unless he steals about six a game. So Rudy turned around, recovered brilliantly. To get the out. He looked like the spaceman on that, didn't he? Bill Lee used to catch it between his legs, behind his back. Typical left-handers follow through. A little pirouette Toward here. Third it is. base. He jams him with a cut fastball, and he says, I still got you, Ricky. Isn't it wonderful to have fielding pitchers like Dave Steve? Jimmy Key, John Cerruti, over the course of 162, how many games do you pick up because your pitcher can feel his position and backs up and does things fundamentally well? I wonder if any scouts from the National Ballet are here. St. Louis, three up right now in the National League Eastern Division race. Just another reason why the Toronto Blue Jays are sitting at the top of the league in Team ERA. This is Gary Ward. He's had a very productive season. 74 runs driven in for the Yankees, 14 homers. He was picked up as a free agent of the offseason. Rudy working 2 0 to him. He sends it deep to right. Jesse will say goodbye to him. A 3 1 ball game now. Ward, this 15th home run for the Yankees. That has been the Achilles heel of John Schroeder this year. That is the 26th home run he has given up this season. That is tops on the Blue Jays team. You know, a surprising number, though. The Blue Jays and pitching in this ballpark, one of the best hitting parks in the entire game of baseball, they are second in the league as far as allowing home runs, fewest home runs. Kansas City, least number of home runs in the American League, but they're playing in a big ballpark. So you would expect that, but that's an amazing stat, I think, even though Sherry's yeah. had trouble in that area. This is Mike Pagliarulo, the Yankees' third baseman. Gary Ward with a much better start to the season than his second half, just hit his fifth home run since the All-Star break. Adiarudo, a big surprise with 32 for the Yankees and 81 runs driven in. He's up there with a tie for Greg Nettles second best season ever for home runs 32 and five behind Nettles all time best which is 37. He's learned to handle left handed pitchers a little bit better. He's worked hard with Don Mattingly and the hitting instructors and Lou Pinella has helped in that area. And in the West the Giants roll along a big five game lead five and a half over Houston dominating the Western Division. You think there's turmoil created up top for the Yankees? Check out March shot with Cincinnati, huh? Wow. Here's Mosby collecting Pagliarulo's fly ball for the second out. Yeah, that team has disintegrated in a hurry. Owner, manager, players, nobody seems happy there. Not even the fans. Billy DeMars, their hitting coach, third base coach, has already resigned. He said he won't be back next year. This is shot apparently put one of the best players in the game Eric Davis right in the middle of that situation when she brought Tony Perez as the hitting instructor in and just ooh. Eric the red Rick Cerrone hey for a guy who almost had to beg his way onto the team back in spring training he said give me a chance give me a look I'll show you what I can do he said a pretty decent year you say he's even done a couple of innings of pitching for the Yankees and outrageous scores. That looked like Joel Skinner coming out of spring training was the regular catcher and then he just didn't hit well and affected his catching. Went down to Columbus on that shuttle. So many Yankees have. In injuries as Don Mattingly told Fergie have really hurt this ball club but I think the morale of the ball club and the chemistry was destroyed from upstairs. You just can't do that to human beings and expect them to come out every day and perform for you. Not year after year. Base hit to left for Rick Cerrone. He keeps it alive with two gone. Yeah if I were a Yankee I'd want on my contract that I got the frequent flyer mileage to Columbus because I'd probably be able to go to, way to Hawaii in the wintertime. I have a nice vacation. Mm -hmm. Shortstop number 20 Bobby Meacham. Breaking ball down right where Cerruti wanted it but on the turf, Rick Cerrone finds a hole. Kelly Gruber's a bat and a glove that's going to become very important against left-handers. And if postseason play is in the offing for the Blue Jays, nice to see him stay healthy, get in the groove. And as the third hit off Cerruti, a couple of singles and a home run. Now Bobby Meacham, the shortstop, hitting nine. 
takes it inside for ball one. There was a time this year when Meacham was sent down from the Yankees to Columbus, or vice versa, Columbus to the Yankees, and he had a round-trip ticket. So when he <laughs> got there, he knew that within a couple of hours, he was coming right back, or at least within a day or so. Rudy pops him up. Gruber across the mound takes charge. That'll do it for the Yankees, but they get a run back on the blast by Gary Ward. Coming to the Blue Jays' second inning now, so Rudy and the Jays have a 3-1 lead. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on CTV. Well, this guy in the middle can't decide if it's winter or summer. It is Tuke Day at Exhibition Stadium, which means colder days do lie ahead. And Tom Henke, the old weather forecaster from the farmlands of Missouri, told me, he said, I don't like it when it's this warm in mid-September. I said, why? He said, it means a very, very cold winter coming up. Wasn't the Polish Pope wearing one of those yesterday? I didn't notice. Are you talking about yourself or somebody else? I didn't see what you wore when you landed here. <laughs> Kelly Gruber gets his first at bat for the number eight spot to start the Toronto second inning. Kelly Gruber. Said Gruber, in terms of depth is going to be a very valuable guy to have down the stretch and postseason if there is to be one and the Jays start this day with a leg up by a game on the Detroit Tigers who are floundering in Milwaukee. Kelly's got to loosen up a little bit. He's become a little too mechanical and everything he does and I think a lot of that's because of the injuries and he's, he's lost a little of that freedom and tightens up with the bat with the glove and he restricts his bat speed. Now here's a prospect. That's me right there. Oh, it's Roger Peckinpah. No, but we'll get to you. As a matter of fact, there you are in 1963 getting ready to play the Dodgers in the World Series. How'd that come out? I think we lost. Koufax, Drysdale. Four games. Padres. Oh, wow. look out. Got him on the hand. Hudson moves him off the plate. And Kelly did a good job whirling out of the way to protect his hands. It's what Mark Connors wants them to brush people back. Fortunately, a grazing blow looked off the upper arm. Got him on the meat, not the bone, it looks like, so he'll be all right. Good tip for your kids with those batting helmets. Whirl backwards so that you can hit on the back. It still hurts, but it doesn't damage anything, and you can protect that face and, of course, the hands. Much the lesser of the two evils. Charlie Moore, the catcher today, hitting in the number nine spot. Showed by, it gets by. I would think that's going to be a pass ball. Kelly's going to try it. No, he had He had a thought because it came all the way back to the screen, and Cerrone couldn't find it for a second. Jimmy was showing bunt, and then the ball looked like it sailed on Cerrone. It hit his glove, and I would think it's got to be a pass ball. It, it is. is. There's something they had trouble with. That was one of the big... Well, the big sore points when Mr. Strindmiller came out with the press, supposedly the Lou Pinnell in confidential meeting called Mark Salas a bum that he couldn't catch and said that Ricky Henderson was Jake and didn't want to play, and Lou has had to smooth those waters over as much as he could. All that plus his regular job of managing. So he got a hit by pitch to first base and a pass ball to second. Parking Gruber there. Now he'll try and go the opposite way. Lays down a great-looking bunt. down past the bag. You want to see a team playing tentatively? That's Greg Kosk, the first base umpire, and a bang-bang call, but Charlie Moore does his job. He really trying to pad the lead. So a lot of managers wouldn't have done that, especially in the DH league on artificial surface. The infield in, he might have let a right-hander hit, at least try and hit the opposite way. Jimmy, Jimmy trying to get that extra run. Very close at first base. Then he'll force the infield in. Nelson Luriano, who singled to start the game and scored. The Yankee team is shell-shocked. Yeah. I mean, they've been playing this way for quite a while now, but you looked at even Hudson was hesitant what he was going to do with the ball. Yep, their season really turned in a hurry. About two weeks ago, and it's gotten a lot worse. They really thought they were going to be in it, and a factor that they've seen themselves just lose ground day in, day out. Three to one here with Gruber at third base now. Chance to score on a fly ball from Loreano. Yeah. Hudson gives him a strike. 
you look at the president of the Tony Kubek fan club there waving to us. BJ. Yep. About time, your boy. For, about time for him to go south. Darn soon now. He may stay a little longer to see what happens postseason. The geese will beat him out of town. Well, there's the fly ball. Not very deep. It will be caught. Didn't tag up. Kelly was, and he did the right thing. John McLaren had him go about halfway because he knew if he made a catch with any kind of chance to throw, it was too short for him to tag up and score. And McLaren had him go about a third of the way down. If it dropped it, he's going to score. But Roberto Kelly shows that speed and makes just a great catch. Who said the shoestring catch wow. is out on artificial surfaces? Well, a tough play for him, too, in terms of judging whether to let it drop in. If he does, it's going to cost him a run. If he catches it, sure, it's shallow enough it may not score a run, but God help him, whatever gets past him. He's got that constant that Ricky Henderson had before the pull hamstring speed, which you can't take away from a guy. It's there day in and day out. That's why they like him so much. So the ingredients all fall in place for the Jays. They get Gruber to third. They get the fly ball, but it's too shallow to score him. And Lloyd Mosby, who popped up to Pagliarulo with foul territory, now stands in there with two guards. Theron wants to talk to Hudson, who starts his hitter off 1-0. Oh. We'll keep you informed on Milwaukee and the Tigers. They should be starting in about 15 minutes over at County Stadium. Don't know how the Yankees work it. Uh, usually a pitcher has an option in this situation to pitch from the stretch or wind up, whichever way he feels he's most effective, but. Sharon may have asked him to pitch for the stretch or may have talked it over with him in case he bounces a breaking ball with Gruber down there. Mosby fouls it back even now to ball and a strike. The if Jays you... meet Baltimore next, Tony, and boy, the Orioles are really sagging. They probably applauded today when that game was rained out in Boston. Well, they ended up last season about as bad as any team could. What were they, something like 12 or 14 and 40-some losses to finish last season? They started off terribly this year. Had a good run after the All-Star break. Had the winning streak. Now they've gone backwards again. But they're looking at some kids and trying to work their pitching staff a little bit more. This year eliminated for one of the earliest on one of the earliest dates in their history from the pennant race. Two and one to Mosby. Well, Baltimore and the uh, Blue Jays for you Wednesday from Exhibition Stadium in Toronto. We're going to see Mike Flanagan. No, we're not going to see Jimmy Key in that game. Flanagan will oppose Jose Mesa, one of the players sent to Baltimore in the Flanagan deal, on Tuesday. Clear that Pat Gillick, with that great arm, didn't want to give up, but you had to get something to get something, and you got a guy that perhaps is going to get you over the hump with Mike Flanagan. A double take for Mosby. He thought that was ball three, but it's a two and two count. Played umpire today is Larry Barnett. If you wanted to look at a pitcher's body and a real smooth delivery with great arm extension you say look at Charles Hudson but the delivery and the durability of his arm doesn't tell what's inside whether or not he knows how to pitch he's got the ability and he had it at Philadelphia concentration wonders or what happens but he's got great stuff three and two the pitch is tight to Lloyd it's interesting that conversation Fergie had earlier with Mosby about hitting the Yankees so well when you realize and obviously Lloyd percentage wise alone is much better against right handed pitching but the Yankees throw much more left handers at you many more left handers and he's hit them better. He just lifts himself up a little bit higher plateau I think. Against them. Urillo's throw is high, but Mattingly hangs onto it in time to get Mosby. They strand Kelly Gruber, who started the inning, getting on board at third base. Not a routine play by any means for the third baseman, Pat Urillo, coming over to the shortstop ball and then gutting down his man with a high throw. So two complete, 3 1 Jays in the Bats Blue Jays baseball at CTV. Lloyd Mosby getting the glasses. He's still shaking his head as he. Walks out to center field. It was the last out of that second inning. I think Tommy Craig, who plays Ken Carson, has done a marvelous job. This this team and a lot of its youth, a lot is the conditioning program and the strength programs all year long that Kenny Carson Institute and Tommy Craig, they've been relatively injury free. But the amazing thing is that 
like with Mike Frower and Stump Merrill at third and first for the Yankees, is that they can get them back playing through some of these injuries. The treatments that Tony Fernandez has gone through every day for that knee, and he just goes out there and plays on it somehow. And scares you every time he extends it. Of course, a lot of it, too, is you got a manager who's a motivator. He's going to be able to find a way to get his guys to keep going out there. And Jimmy Williams has been done that, too. And he did it much better this year than last year. Now there is the trainer talking to the manager about the Mosby situation. Good looking butt laid down. They're going to play it. Goes foul. And it does. A smart move by Kelly Gruber, who really didn't have a chance but when he reached the ball. Had to hope it rolled foul and did. Now the way Roberto Kelly runs, and this is knowing your own ballpark. Even though Kelly Gruber knew he had great speed, he might bunt. He saw it. It was a perfect bunt right down the line, which is where they try and do it. So the third baseman doesn't have a good angle to throw. Helps to know the away way of the first land. base. Yeah. So Kelly will come back and reload. I still think he's got a chance to be a star in this league. There's some people who have become doubters that he's a little bit too robotized and doesn't have instincts, instincts and so forth. But you can't teach great strong throwing arm, power at the plate running speed he's got those qualities they don't have schools for that he'll go as long as his head will allow him to now kelly hitting it uh, the right side has a couple of strikes remind you the labounce player of the game for toronto receives the new canon eos the ultimate auto focus slr camera faster quieter more sensitive than ever before the canon eos is much more than a camera has ever been also an amateur baseball team will be the guest the player of the game at canon at a future game and the Arthur Squirt baseball team is here today. Noah's sister, Mabel Squirt. <laughs> well, Squirt's not the man's last name. That is a class of baseball, like Little League, Midget. Very descriptive term in terms squirt. of the size. The Squirts are here today. Willie Randolph now. The grounded to Kelly Gruber at third base, his first time up. His injury hurt this ball club the most. They held their heads above water when both Henderson and Mattingly were out for an extended period of time. When Randolph went out, they found out how valuable a middle infielder, a skill position, who can hit in his leadership qualities. When he left the diamond, that knee surgery, they started going downhill with their offense. And he's so valuable defensively making the pivot. He added the stability for Wayne Tollison, who since has gone down with a sore shoulder. Well, Tony, if you look, you see where Willie Randolph missed 38 games this season. Ricky Henderson, 59 games. Mattingly, 23 games. That's the story. And you know, you, Lou's still got a chance with this Yankee club to win 90 ball games. He's got a chance to do it with his stopper in the bullpen after a record last year, Dave Rigetti having an offseason. You could fill a couple of hospital wards with injured Yankees this year, 12 of the DL at various times. Fielder ranging way back will give way now to the right fielder Barfield. He makes the second out of Randolph's fly ball. Doesn't he make it easier on the second base from the first baseman? And probably the toughest play there is, aside from the 3-6-3 three, three double play for the first baseman, is to go back on that ball in foul territory with a little win. Well, the Orioles fly in tomorrow. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday games here in Exhibition Stadium. Good reserve seats and general admission seats available for all three dates. The Orioles are not a factor, but they may have something to say about where the Blue Jays finished. What of the Wednesday game for you on CTV. Now the menace of Mattingly with two gone. And they're going to get him out very easily. George Bell crossing over, makes it in left center field. Three up, three down. Yankees here in the New York third inning. Blue Jays holding their three to one lead on Labatt's Blue Jays baseball here on CTV. Live at Exhibition Stadium. Way out there in left field. Nova Scotians also with us. Well, what was that city? Shetakamp? I have Nova Scotia, I know that for sure. I keep getting I'll leave you to the towns and cities of Canada. Heck, you can run for election pretty soon with all the towns that you've mentioned over the past few months. Yeah, there's a lady in our mobile unit may run me out of town if I keep it up. She has to answer all the phone calls about all the mistakes we make. <laughs> Stephanie Williams. Tony Fernandez, who walked and scored in the first inning, is an 18-game hit streak alive. That is three shy of a club record. Takes that up by the year. It is one and one. You know, there are MVPs, Rookie of the Year. They ought to have a category. The player you most like to watch play. 
he's one, Fernandez, and the other one is Ozzie Smith, and I'm biased, obviously, to that position. When you talk about smooth, quick, bat, knowledge of the game and the field for the position, the man right there's got it, Tony Fernandez. We've talked about it. He's the one guy the Jays would hate to lose, and there were some shaky moments the last two or three weeks with that B of his, but it's responding nicely. You won't see Tony's batting stance against various pitchers with different deliveries and different styles the same too often. Uh, you know, that pitcher really, even though he's a defensive player supposedly, but when he's got the ball, he's an offensive player obviously, but Tony takes a lot of things away from the pitcher by changing his stance and his approach to hitting, moving around in the batter's box. They never can get a beat on how to pitch him, and being a switch hitter, that adds another dimension sure. obviously because they've got to worry about him from both sides. It all adds high up. ball, low ball, is it breaking balls better, fast balls, and when he adjusts like this, it makes it even tougher to get a read on him. As a result, he hits 327. He does a lot of that with great hand-eye coordination. That's his defense also. Mattingly unassisted for the first out of this third inning. So Tony will have to wait another at bat to try to extend his hit streak. It'd be nice if we had a Fernandez watch the final three weeks along with the monitor watch we had earlier in the season over in Milwaukee. Charles Hudson since coming in has been pitching inside an awful lot. He's already hit Gruber. He's come inside with a couple of other hitters. And the guy you'd like to come inside is George Bell because he likes to dive into the ball and likes the ball away. Bell singled into right field and drove home the first run of the game, Luriano, for his 120th RBI in the first inning. High, he just couldn't hold back. Took his rip. To me, George has made the best prediction from a player I've heard all year long, and this goes way back to March and spring training when he said, I'm going to hit a lot more home runs. I don't know if he thought this many more. He said, I'm going to change my stance, pull the ball a little bit more. Do you think anybody ever believed he'd hit as many as this? One every, been. every three games from now on, we'll give him 50. Jays have 21 games remaining. As he strokes that to the shortstop, Bobby Meacham. He vacuums it up and guns down Bell for the second out of this third inning. Most hitters, right-handed, would have struck out on that pitch because it was a great breaking ball, low and away, maybe out of the strike zone. And Bell with that great control of the strike zone, and first baseman, he almost 23. hit it for a base hit. Question may involve Fielder. as much hoping as thinking. But do you think there will be an All-Canadian World Series this year? And there are the numbers to call. I'd like to hear from you. Expos have a shot, and so do the Jays, certainly. New York they keep touting subway series every year which never materialize I guess in Canada you'd have to call it a what a via rail or a rapid air series Montreal and Toronto a 401 series offers Paul Beast and the Blue Jays vice president ever so alertly here in our booth he likes to drive rather than fly or go on the train alertly the man was sound asleep in a stupor till you woke him up I think I did. Name. answers were called Fielder fouling it back. It is one and two. I wish there'd be a wind shift with that cigar smoke. This is incredible. That is the. This is one of those nine cent cigars at Beeson. <laughs> John Hudson from TV Labatt, right behind us, always looking over. Very our popular man at McGregor Bay, though. That is the one place he is popular. You're right. With the fish, he leaves them alone. <laughs> Jimmy Williams resisting the temptation this early in the ball game to change his lineup around against Hudson, a right-hander, and go to his left-handed hitters. He doesn't want to do it too soon. Some of the left-handers they've got in the bullpen. Well, I thought for a moment we succeeded in forcing Paul out of the booth, but he sits down again. He'll he'll stay for more. <laughs> two and two. The appeal denied down at first base. Umpire Greg Kosk says no swing. Minnesota leading Cleveland two to one in the third inning. Milwaukee and the Tigers just getting fired up at County Stadium. They'll be underway shortly. And Fielder strikes out. So Hudson extremely effective since coming on for the Yankees in relief of starter Steve Trout. Retires the side here. Three complete. Tony coming right up. And the Bats Blue Jays baseball on CTV. 
When Dave Winfield of the Yankees agreed to be a head table guest at the 86 Conn Smythe Sports Celebrities Dinner in Toronto, he commissioned artist Terence Fogarty to create a painting showing the Jays winning the 85 championship. There it is. There are still a few left. Proceeds will go to MS. They're $150 each. I think there are about uh, 60 or 70 of these lithographs of the original painting and left. So there's the number to call if you'd still like one. Will there be another Fergie if uh, the Blue Jays stay on top of these final three weeks? John Cerruti will face Dave Winfield hitting in the cleanup spot, then Ricky Henderson and Gary Ward DHing. Three to one Toronto in the fourth. Only Yankee run. Ward with a home run in the second. Fly ball, left field corner. Will it be trouble? Bell back to the wall. It is three to two. Winfield with a home run. Number 25 for Dave. So many times during the course of the summer, that wind comes through that little wind tunnel in the left field corner and keeps those kinds of long fly balls in the ballpark. Not today. Three to two. Cerruti has given up the most home runs on this staff. That was a total of 27 for the season against him. I have often wondered if when Dave Winfield was a free agent, if he had signed with the Blue Jays or Atlanta or the Chicago Cubs or Fenway Park, if he wouldn't have signed a sure ticket to Baseball's Hall of Fame. But in Yankee Stadium with Death Valley and left center, center and right center field, he gets a lot of home runs taken away. But if he had signed in a hitter's ballpark instead of for the cash, oh boy. Yep. He may still make it because he's a great all-round player. Tell Mike Geezer how he did it. A ball and a strike now to Ricky Henderson. He grounded out in the second. A nice play by John Cerruti. We talked before the game about the old all-fish team. Thinking of Steve Trout, you mentioned Bass. Who would you have at third base? I wouldn't, I wouldn't bite on this fish story. You're not going to hook me with this baby. Kelly Grouper. I'd put Chico Simone there. <laughs> Tigers versus the Blue Jays. That's a four-game series. 7.35 start the 24th of September. This baby could very well. The Eastern Division. Balance space swing on that series or perhaps the last series of the season. Get your tickets early, folks, because there aren't going to be many left. I understand the scalpers have been out for this Yankee series. You know, the Yankees not mathematically eliminated, but almost impossible for the win this now for them to win it with three games to teach uh, three teams to jump over. Yeah, it could be a best of seven showdown. Tigers and Jays. One of the most dynamic leadoff hitters in the history of the game, although hitting fifth today. Fouled out of play. Ricky Henderson. I think Reggie Jackson had about one of the best lines, and he usually is very eloquent in what he says when he talked about Ricky. He was stealing those 100 bases, hitting almost 30 home runs. Said he's the only guy in baseball, this is before Eric Davis came along, can turn a walk into a triple, steal two, and defensively turn a triple into an out. That great speed. Not this year. Two and two count from Cerruti to Henderson. Larry Barnett behind the plate. One of the best in the American League. Wonder if he minds the replays up on the board here. If you're a good umpire, why would you mind if they put a controversial replay on the board? It'd make the umpire sharper. Make you better, wouldn't it? Make you bear down a little bit more. Yeah, I would think so. You just don't want to get the fans too riled up, but they're going to get riled up anyway uh, if they don't see the call they want. If Larry Burnett could survive the controversy in the 75 World Series in the arm brister fist call, he can survive a controversial replay. Tried to backdoor with a breaking ball, fouled out of play by Henderson. And that's a number again for the remaining posters depicting the 85 clinching of the Eastern Championship of the Jays. Three to two, Toronto in the fourth. Liriano just out of his reach, but what an effort. So Henderson is out. And the Yankees suddenly are knocking on the door. Tying run at first base now as Gary Ward will step to the plate. 
Anderson hit an awfully good pitch. You sure can see Charlie Moore was going to almost scoop that breaking ball out of the dirt, and Henderson went down and got it out of that severe crouch. Liriano playing him about straight away, but hit crisply, and on the turf it sneaked by. Now, in that crouch, would you not want to pitch a hitter like Henderson higher rather than lower? Well, if you can get the strike, you pitch him higher, he takes it. It's a ball. Jose Nunez who, if he's called, will perhaps put a little relief appearance in for the Minister of Sports from the Dominican Republic, who is here today, Andres Vanderhorst. Come to see George Bell, Tony Fernandez, Nunez, Nelson Liriano. Ooh. Winfield let it off with a home run that just barely scraped the fence in left field. Henderson with a single. Now it's Ward who homered as a DH in the second. Five hits, three singles, two homers given up by John Rudy so far. They got Ward in the offseason, a free agent, to help them against left-handed pitchers. And he did a lot of that the first few months. But then when all the injuries hit, he and Claudel Washington called the play day in and day out and perhaps wore him down. He was a valuable addition, but more as a part-time player, bench player, than an everyday player. One ball, no strikes. Cerruti to Warren. Ricky has stolen 29 and caught six times. Those are great numbers for a lot of ball players, but not for Ricky Henderson. He's already had three 100 stolen base seasons in his career. And he's not an old guy. What's Ricky, about 27? Yeah, somewhere in there. In fact, another man whose name will be in the manager of the year, candidacy in the American League, Tom Treblehorn, the manager of the Brewers. Everybody knows who he is now. They didn't in spring training. But he had Ricky Henderson as a kid in the minor leagues, the Oakland chain, and Henderson says that he taught me more about stealing bases than anybody else. I'm saying a lot, because Billy Martin Taught Ricky Anderson quite a bit. I delved into the Yankee guide. I find that on Christmas Day, he will be 29. Ha. Ah. So, Cerruti falls in the hole. Three balls and no strikes to Gary Ward. John has not yet walked the Yankee. He has struck out one, but he's in a deep hole now. He may be paying a little too much attention to Ricky Anderson. Trout may have been to Liriano in the first. Ball four. Two men out, nobody out. And Mike Pelliarulo will come on. And bring a trip from skipper Jimmy Williams. Who has become his own man. His first year, some said it was a Bobby Cox team, a team that won. Jimmy didn't do much with it. It was a lineup that had been successful. Won a division, lost the Kansas City Royals for the American League pennant. You saw last year, I guess it's about July or August, you can't put your finger on it, where Jimmy was starting to think, hey, this is my job, my team, and he became a great believer in the Harry S. Truman axiom, the buck stops here, and he said, hey, if the buck's gonna stop here, I'm gonna make the decisions, popular or not, and he's made some unpopular ones with his players, but he's also gained more respect. The buck stops here. I'll make change if I have to. He has proven he's a mentally tough guy. Somewhat phlegmatic personality. Doesn't talk a whole lot. May not be controversial in his statements, but doggone, he, he's done a job this year. Pally Rulo fly to center field in the second. He's got two on with nobody out. The Jays leading three to two in the fourth. Nunez should be ready if needed. He's bunny. Fouls it off. Now we've seen Jimmy the last few weeks in particular uh, assume the image of a manager who would rather err on the side of uh, speed than of uh, laying back and letting things happen to him. He may be, if you want to follow him, be a little too quick in some situations, but I'll tell you, he's got a high percentage of being right. Well, he's done. You know, Sparky Anderson had the quick hook with a great Cincinnati team. Some say he had too quick a hook, perhaps got the bullpen too worn out. Now with the kids he's using, the bullpen's getting a little fresher. Pick off. Nobody home.
The Bronx Bombers in the fourth inning. Hal Yerulo with all those home runs. Look where he is. Sacrificing on the first pitch. He's going to do it again. And there goes Henderson. It's going to be trouble. Moore is going to let it. There it goes. Low foul. And what a play by Charlie. He kept with Henderson running. And Ward right behind him. They had no chance to play at third. Kelly Gruber had to go back to cover third in the Steelers. And watch Kelly on this great left center field shot. He knows it's a steal, so he isn't going to feel his butt. Cerruti couldn't get there in time, and Charlie blocks Cerruti off and lets it go foul. A good play by Moore. They were going to get nobody. They were going to be loaded up. Now at least they've got a chance to get it out on Pagliarulo with a two-strike count. So twice today at this exhibition stadium field is tilted on the Blue Jays' favor. A lot of English. Looks like Willie Hoppy. The ball rolled foul. Lou Pinella thought he had the bases loaded and nobody out. Not a lot of aggressive baseball right there in the fourth. The guy who just had a home run, a single, four pitches to Ward for a walk, and you have a home run hitter, even though he's left-handed up there sacrificing. He's playing tentative baseball. I was going to say, when you said that, the Jays would probably prefer the bases loaded, nobody out, to a three-run blast here by Pagliarulo. One ball, two strikes. Cerruti, who had a three-up, three-down inning in the third, got shocked by Winfield's home run leading off. Now Fernandez is going to try and calm down another intangible that Tony Fernandez possesses. At the age of 25, a team leader in his quiet way. I've got the feeling, Tony, I don't know about you, that it may not be 15-14 as the score was one night here in July. But this could be a high-scoring ball game. Cerruti was the starter, incidentally, in that 15-14 uh, loss to the Yankees. Blue Jays have won eight of their last ten ball games. They've got a game lead over the Tigers, six and a half over Milwaukee, seven over the Yankees. Pick off. Out of time to get that guy. Well, they're just trying to keep him a little closer and not necessarily the steal at this point, but from wandering too far and stealing signs or location and flashing him to the hitter, Pagliarulo. Get Henderson to think more about Liriano and Fernandez than flashing signs or location to Pagliarulo. One ball, two strikes, nobody out. Cerruti trying to prevent a big inning. He'd like to have no runs. He's got it. Henderson taking a little stutter step and Tony almost caught him in between. I thought he had him too. There are so many pitchers who do not like to whirl and throw to second base and Henderson knows this. But when you've got Fernandez with that great glove there he just barely got back. It was close. Tony almost stepping on the fingers of Ricky Henderson. Bobby Gritch in that play when he was playing it put his knee down there and block you off when you dove head first. Still one ball and two strikes. He's going to go again. Look out. Throw wasn't as good that time. Now, Cerruti has got to make up his mind. If he can't do this, so that's Charlie Moore's going out. Good move, Charlie. You say, okay, now we've done what we want to do. I'm not saying don't throw there anymore, but you've got one thing you've got to do. You are 0 and 2 on Pagliarulo. He's the man you've got to get out. You're 1 and 2 now. And worry about Henderson a little bit, but once you commit, make sure you're going to make a quality pitch and try and finish off Pagliarulo. Yeah, with Pag's power, you don't want to lose your concentration with him at the plate. Which is what a healthy Ricky Henderson does better than anybody in the game. I guess you'd have to put Vince Coleman in there too now with his 100 stolen bases. Divide the attention of that pitcher and catcher. And Loriano will do it for the Blue Jays too. A ball and two strikes in a 3-2 ball game. The Jays ahead. Fly ball. Lloyd with the glasses down. Now he starts after it. He's got it. Henderson will tag up, but he won't challenge the arm of his open buddy. That wasn't very deep. That's a big out. Now they got a shot of a double play with Cerrone coming up. Ricky Henderson looks like he's got his head and his legs in the game now. There were some that questioned them that. Just a few weeks back when he was on the disabled list for a lengthy period of time. 
Well, the back of the leg hurt. The head said no, and he stayed out, as you say, for a long, long time. When you look at a Ricky Henderson, he's a very muscular young, uh, you know, short person, and his legs are so big, and when he gets a pull muscle, it's going to linger for a while, especially with his quickness and the way he accelerates. Now he has an even better situation with a right-handed hitter up if he wants to steal third. A strike to Rick Cerrone, who singled in the second. As you know, in the case of Ricky, he tried to come back way back when, when he yeah. first had the injury, and simply made it worse and said, no more of that. I'm going to wait until it's completely healed. And they put him in the pinch run when he was not disabled at one time, and he injured it trying to steal second base. Yep. Pick off from Liriano. Pick off decoy. One out, two men out. The length of the games over the past few years, perhaps the principal reason. The emphasis on base stealing games and pitchers trying to hold him on, stepping off, throwing over. He's going. He's going to second Charlie Moore. side of the bag we might with, have had him with one out he was going to get the slower of the two runners Gary Ward he didn't feel he could get Henderson having to throw over the head of the right handed hitter Cerrone and it looked like Charlie just got the ball stuck in the webbing and then as you said a good point down got it to the wrong side of the bag and now their runners on second and third for the Yankees and Rick Cerrone with one down that's a big play he takes away the double play and gives the Yankees two guys in scoring position with one out Charlie had a good idea, but I think that glove with the webbing preventing him from getting a good grip and getting a lot of zip on the throw. One and one count to Cerrone. Gruber comes a little closer at third and Fielder at first. The middle of the diamond, they're back at normal depth. And Cerruti still worried about Henderson. Playable. Henderson will tag at third. He will he challenge Barfield's arm? I would doubt it. No. Nope. Look at this throw by Jesse. Oh, it's on the money, too. Arm against speed, and the arm prevailed. The speed went back to third. A man who had 40 home runs last year led the league in assists. And he's going to watch the board and admire his style as he sees the throw. That's what you call inner confidence. Some call it cockiness. But Jesse said, I think I'll take a look at that. So he watched the scoreboard in right field to watch his mechanics. Well, he didn't get to see it the first time. Everybody else <laughs> did. He deserves a chance. Now it's Bobby Meacham. Cerruti trying to pitch out of this first and second jam with nobody out. Then second and third with one out. A strike to Meacham, hitting in the ninth slot. There's your score. Jays lead by one. Now, Cerruti has worked his way down to the part of the order where he could get himself out of trouble. He got Cerro in a 237 hitter. Now Meacham with a 239 mark coming in. Base hit, Meacham. Bell may have a play award at the plate. Here comes George's throw. It will be little offline and a good slide away from the tag by Ward. So the steal and not getting Ward at second base on that double steal gets a couple runs. Isn't that something? Huh. He gets Cerrone. He got Pagliarulo and then Bobby Meacham who's been maligned by the owner and everybody else in this Yankee organization drives in two to give the Yankees a one run lead. The ball hit and tailed off just a little bit from George Bell, and that'll be it for John Cerruti. Yeah, it never fails. A 239 hitter with 11 RBIs burns you. Gives the Yankees the lead. A little bit of drift down the throw from George Bell, carried into foul territory, and Charlie Moore couldn't make a tag. So Meacham with two RBIs on his single sends John Cerruti to the dugout. After being staked to a 3 0 lead, he suddenly leaves this ball game, standing in the potential role of loser down 4 3. Your attention, please. Now pitching for the Blue Jays, number 45. So the Dominican, Jose Nunez, comes out to face Roberto Kelly, the Panamanian, hitting in the leadoff spot with a runner on first and two down, and the Yankees ahead by a run. Nunez, four wins, one loss. ERA just under five. 
He's had some control problems giving up the odd home run, but he's got a great arm. While he's tuning up, let's look in an SO scrapbook piece. The SO baseball scrapbook with Tony Kubek, major league player and broadcaster. The batter is entitled to first base when he is touched by a pitch ball or hit by pitch. But like most rules in baseball, there are significant exceptions. One, the ball is in the strike zone when it touches the batter. Two, the batter makes no attempt to avoid being touched by the ball. If the umpire rules the batter makes no attempt to avoid being hit by a pitch, it shall be declared a ball or strike depending on its location. But the ball is dead and no runner may advance. For the most part, however, being hit by a pitch is obvious, if not sometimes painful. Ask Tony about that one. So Jose Nunez will try and save a run and shut down the Yankees attack. It started with Winfield's home run, a Henderson single, a ward walk. Caliulo flied out, double steal, Cerrone flied to right, Barfield's arm, prevented the run, then Meacham, two RBIs in his single. Four to three Yankees. So another odd one hit, which that's been yesterday down in Atlanta. Gary Renicky of the Braves, and shitting with the bases loaded. In the tie game. Got hit by a pitch, the home plate umpire. Game first base looked like the end of the game. There goes the runner, Meacham. Moore's throw. Yes. He slides right into it. So Charlie Moore wished he had made that throw. I guess. To Ward to retire him before the double steal led by Henderson from second to third. But the Yankees come up with three runs. A walk to Ward by Ceruti. Tagged by Fernandez. We go to the bottom of the fourth. 4-3 four, Yankees. You're watching the bats. Blue Jays baseball on CTV. So a slugger Barfield who has shortened his stroke. And it's made him more aggressive. Allowed him to wait a little bit longer. Drive the ball to the opposite field. So the two starters, Trout and Cerruti, are gone. Nunez and Hudson for the Yankees. Charles will face Barfield. The new cast schedule could be Leach. He's in the on-deck circle. So, a little early in the ball game, Jimmy Williams not going to his left-hand platoon hitters, but he may start now with the Jays trailing by a run. Well, that's just the DH spot, so he can start it there, certainly. Hudson with an outstanding fastball. The appeal goes down. Greg Kosk raises the right hand. Jesse in the hole, no balls, two strikes. The Wondrous Way comes back to visit us. Started in Oakland, I don't know how many years ago, by Crazy George. He used to get up on top of the dugout. He claimed to start it. Then in Seattle, the football fans, I think University of Washington, claimed they started it first. There was a lively debate. Really, it's one of those things. Who the heck cares? Crazy George <laughs> is from Vancouver, isn't it? Could be. Yeah. Is he? He first got crazy with the BC Lions and uh -huh. took his insanity south. No balls, two strikes to Jesse Barfield, the leadoff hitter in the bottom of the fourth. Montreal behind Bryn Smith with a 1 0 lead over the Cubs. So the Tigers and Brewers scoreless in their game. Little by little, those candidates who had their Hats in the ring for the Cy Young Award are falling by the wayside. Rick Roden was a candidate. Now he's trying to pitch through his sore shoulder. That may hurt his chances. Popped up. Willie Randolph. Well, Mattingly, he's got it. One out. With so many teams still not mathematically eliminated, in the four divisional races, you've still got a lot of possible sung out signing award candidates, but especially, especially MVP candidates. And the month of September becomes so important if you carry your team on its back, George Ballas, most of this season, you end up winning it. Rick Leach, pinch hitting for Juan Beniquez. Juan hit the double play in the first. That was the Jays' three run first inning. Since then, Hudson has shut them down. Little soft liner right at Randolph, two down. 
there are a ton of players, as you can see. Look at the Yankees have about 35. See the lineups, and the manager will use that MasterCard, usually delegated perhaps to a John McLaren as they make substitution, cross it out. Many managers carry a little lineup card in their back pocket so they know who's available, especially at this time of the year. Roberto Kelly goes back a few strides. So Charles Hudson now has got a good string of Blue Jays set down going as he has another three up, three down inning. That's two consecutively. We'll go to the fifth. The Yankees with a one-run lead. You're watching the bats. Blue Jays baseball on CTV. And and the home of the Blue Nose loves the Blue Jays. Halifax Gold Blue Nose, is that the famous boat? The Blue Nose. boat on every dime in your pocket. Uh-huh. Canadian dime. PEI, Prince Edward Island, just off the coast of Nova Scotia. Yeah. Marion Posty with an outstanding radio show. I've told him to get you on. You'd be a stimulating guest with all the sports you do. What show is that? They called you. Of course, it's for nothing. It's a freebie. I do a lot of those. <laughs> just like four this to, afternoon. Four to three, Yankees. Came up with three runs on three base hits in the fourth. Similar to what the Blue Jays did in the first. Three runs on three base hits. Yankees also got a home run in the second from Ward. Kelly has struck out and grounded out. Nunez in relief of Ceruti. I got Paul Beeston of the Blue Jays on a talk show in New York, and now he's going on the circuit, I think. He's making appearances. Constantly in demand. Well, what do you think about the World Series in Canada? Ah, pretty close call, 241 to 211. 241 Optimus. Yeah. Long way to go. No ball, two strike count. Kelly gets a, gets a base hit to left field. He's got blazing speed. The second baseman, number 30, Willie Randolph. First, Meacham tried to steal, and Charlie Moore threw him out. You can see the reaction of Nunez. He knew when he threw the pitch, he perhaps made a mistake. Got the ball upstairs, and he didn't finish the hitter off, and he had him no balls, two strikes. Charlie Moore, mentioning to Nunez, give me a chance. Vary your rhythm. Step off if you want. Maybe make a couple throws over, but above all else, Let's focus on Randolph, who's a good first ball, fastball hitter. Oh, he just missed. Moore thought that Larry Barnett missed the call. He held it there for a while. Now, the Orioles coming in for our next telecast Wednesday on CTV, 7.30 Eastern time. Check for the time in your area. Unions does not have a great uh, first batter efficiency mark. He's retired 17 of 32 now that he has faced. That's the first batter because Kelly was up and uh, didn't get finished back in the fourth inning. And he settles down after that. He could be a little shaky in the beginning, but he can get into a groove and really pitch well. <laughs> he got two outs the other night or in the series. Kelly with one foot on the carpet, leaning just a shade towards second base. Randolph can take two strikes if he wants to to give him a chance to steal. On the other hand, if you try and unload a fastball by him, he can jump all over it. Kelly with 51 stolen bases, caught 10 times. He's going. That was at Columbus, a breaking ball. A perfect pitch to run on. A breaking ball low and away. So Kelly with another stolen base. Was he four for four in a Yankee uniform? And you watch this, the Randolph ducking down in front of the line of Charlie's throw again at, on the hop. Had no chance to get him. And aside from that, Count runs two balls, no strikes to Willie Randolph. So now Roberto Kelly as a major leaguer is four for four in the stolen base department. And they've got to watch him also. Kelly Gruber's got to shade in a little in case Randolph bunts. I doubt if he will. Three and oh. Farmer Cleveland manager. Of Kansas City for Dick Hauser, Mike Ferraro, the third base coach. Nunez way behind Willie Randolph, 3 0, with the Yankees leading by a run. Now let him go after it. Three balls and a strike. I'll say one thing, Nunez didn't let up. He had a lot on that pitch. Good hard fastball. Something that a lot of young pitchers, although he's pitched so often and there's so many big league hitters in the Dominican Republic in winter baseball, 
he already knows and has a feel. In the big leagues, you can't afford to let up. He throws another fastball that Randolph can't get around on, so the count is full. And the deeper the count, the better hitter that Willie Randolph often is. Al Whitmar thinks that Jose Nunez, with the great arm he had in a few years down the road, might be number one or number two starter in this Blue Jays team. That's how he thinks, how much he thinks of Nunez's arm. And it may be fight next year uh, to see whether or not Nunez this year, of course, has to stay on the roster because he was drafted for that $50,000 price out of the Royals organization. He's been a plus. He sure didn't want to give him back. You know, you got to fight next year. Well, I'm sure Woodmar will. I want to keep him all next year. Ball gets by Charlie Moore. I guess I've been reading the wrong count. They had three and two on the board, and it was a three and zero oh count. I thought. And apparently, the count was wrong on the board. I apologize to you. It was three and one. Now three or two. Let's see. That's no, a that's, that's I guess a walk. it was You're right. right. Randolph, for some yep. reason, doesn't go. I, the count was. He lost right. the count. Off the glove of Charlie Moore. We will get an official scores decision on that, I would think, again, because it hit the glove. It would have been a tough backhanded call. It's a wild pitch. One of those where Joe Sotchuk had to make a decision. It hit the glove, could have given a wild pitch, but it was so difficult for Moore, where that fastball sailed, to keep it. So it is Yankees four, Jays three, and there are now runners on first and third with nobody out. Blue Jays bullpen will get going. David Wells, the left-hander. And Mark Eichhorn from the right side for Jimmy Williams. Yeah, you're in the heavy part of the Yanks lineup now. Mattingly, Winfield, Henderson, Ward, Pat Urulo. Mattingly, a single and a fly out to left field. Should get one run home. Bell should go to second base. He's going to come home, which is a bad mistake. My George, yeah. he couldn't throw him out with a cannon from left field, and Bal has made very few mistakes this year. He's made none with the bat in his hands. Defensively, he just made one, allowing on that rainbow throw Randolph to go to second base. George knows it; he didn't have to be told. As soon as it left his hand, he knew he shouldn't have thrown, and he knew if he had thrown, he had it to cut off. Man, he didn't do either right. There's no way, as you say, he would ever get Kelly. So sacrifice fly RBI, no time at bat for Mattingly making the score five to three Yankees. Kelly scores after the single stolen base wild pitch sacrifice fly. Randolph tags up goes to second so with Winfield a double play candidate up. The double play possibility is gone. Dave Steve who says he's unhappy. Smiling at the moment but that yeah, could be momentary. You know, another thing Jimmy's done, going to that four-man rotation, there's some are saying, hey, this is too soon. You can't do that yet. But the Jimmy's made the decision. And again, he did it with Barfield when he didn't start him for three or four games, and Jesse came back a little bit mad. Jesse still feels he hopes, or he hopes he's not in a platoon situation, but, you know, if that's what Jimmy Williams thinks is going to win ball game, that's what he's going to do, a good breaking ball from Nunez to get ahead of Winfield. It's not all that uncommon, is it, the pennant race for a manager to go to his top four pitchers and rotate them if they can withstand losing a day's rest? Well, you know, early in September and at the end of October, you had a few off days, you could get away with it. Now it gets to the point where you, you start playing almost every day. And, uh, uh, and uh, it's, it's a move that some people say this late in the season you shouldn't try because the pitching staff may be worn down. <laughs> Another good breaking ball, this time a slider, two strikes. But you've got to remember, Flanagan has not had that many innings pitched because he's on the DL, so he should be strong. Saruti has been in the starting rotation and relief, so he didn't have a big inning buildup. Jimmy Key, leading the league in ERA, has had that shoulder tenderness. Clancy's a horse. I mean, it, he's so darn strong that you can get away with it with him, too, I think. So I think all those things went into the consideration of Al Woodmar and Jimmy Williams when they decided this to the breaking ball. One ball, two strikes. You mentioned the days off, and that is an important factor. Just one for the Blue Jays, and it comes on October the 1st, just with four days to go in the season. And have it help them if there's a rain problem. And, you know, I mean, this is not written in stone. I mean, there could be, you know, if somebody falls by the wayside, has a couple bad outings, you can see a Dave Steve pop right back in. Milwaukee, Detroit, scores the runner going. Field with Randolph trying to sneak down the third on Jose Nunez and Charlie Moore cuts him down at third. A tough throw over the head of a six foot five right handed hitter, Dave Winfield. 
Gruber with a good slap tag and Rocky Rowe with a call. Can accuse Charlie of a couple of shaky throws today, but she also must give him credit for two great ones. This was one right here. So that throw by Charlie Moore and the tag by Gruber. Perhaps it's George Bell off the hook, which is what a good team does when they're on a roll and playing well. They make a mistake, the pitcher gets you out of the hole, or a throw by Moore in this case. Breaking ball, somehow Winfield got a piece and stayed alive. Two and two, two down, five, three Yankees. Dave Winfield does this almost as much as Tony Oliva used to when he was that great hitter for the Minnesota Twins. There were bats always out in the field with him. Or Cliff Johnson with the Jays. Heath Cliff. With javelin throwers, hammer throwers. Winfield grounded out in the first, and he had a home run in the fourth. For Dave Winfield, it was home run number 25, RBI number 91. Two outs, 2-2 two, two count. We're in the fifth. He just threw Winfield away with a moving fastball. Right down the middle, but just a little too much on it. So Nunez gave up a run, a single stolen base, wild pitch. Sacrifice fly, Matty will go to the bottom of the fifth. New York 5, Toronto 3. You're watching the bats. Blue Jays baseball on CTV. So we'll go to the bottom of the fifth. Charlie Moore scheduled a hit with the Jays trailing by two. But with the expanded roster, Jimmy Williams having 11 position players at his disposal. The call ups from Syracuse and Knoxville. Ernie Witt will pitch it for Charlie Moore. Yesterday's hero. When you get in a stretch run, you want the old pros to take over. Ernie Wood had a big hand in the first two games in this Yankee series. Boy, yesterday, two home runs, six RBIs. Ernie hitting at 270 with 14 home runs and those 63 big runs batted in. Hudson, ball one. You think Lou wishes he'd start at Charlie Hudson? <laughs> Been tough. Trout's yeah. caused them all the grief today. Lou has had a beaten up team, as you indicated, and tired arms on the pitching staff. <laughs> Too high from Hudson. Two balls, no strikes. Hudson has allowed just one base runner. That was Gruber hitting him with a pitch. He's been flawless since then, retiring seven straight. Make it nine straight. Two balls, no strikes to Ernie Witt. Two and one. Jimmy Williams gets a couple of pitchers soft tossing down in his bullpen. Craig McMurtry, he is bespectacled. And Joe Johnson. His glasses also. Huck foul, right field corner by Witt, two and two. Yeah. With an appendectomy to start his season off, not the way he wanted to see it happen. He pitched well in the spring, also on occasion. Tom Hankey and to wife Kathy sitting home in Missouri. Tough way to spend an anniversary with that couple. Seventh anniversary back home with the children. Tom's got business to do here. What a year he's had. What a force Hankey was from the All-Star break when he was 17 for 17 and save opportunities. A little bit overworked, getting into the seventh inning out in the West Coast, four innings in the extra inning game, so perhaps he needs a few more days rest. Little scrubber off the end of the bat, but Kelly is there. Does he react to the ball in a hurry? He is quick in center field. Looked like it had a chance to drop. He covered a lot of ground in a hurry. So Witt is down for the first out in the fifth. It'll bring up Nelson Liriano. That's 10 in a row now retired by Charlie Moore. Or Charlie Hudson. Charlie Moore has retired in favor of Witt. Liriano with a single run scored in the first and fly to center field in the second. A very, very gifted young middle infielder. They are hard to find. You put two switch hitters out there. 
if you get a Fernandez and a Liriano, one two in your lineup, you throw Mosby in the three spot, or if Mosby's second, and a lot of speed in the first three slots. Look at the Cardinals, or sometimes they shoot five switch hitters at you. What does a manager do when he tries to come out of the bullpen? You don't know what who to bring in. It can really be a big, big plus. One strike to Nelson. One and one. Now you're looking potentially at one of the great infield combinations as the years will go on here for the Blue Jays with Loriano at second and Tony Fernandez at short. And as a backup, you got Manny Lee at this point, uh, who's another switch hitter. They get Manny to try and hit every ball out of the ballpark. You have to become a little better offensive force. Two balls and a strike. Cerruti and Trout started the ball game. Now it's Nunez and Charles Hudson. A little high. And Liriano appears to be the kind of player that is a fairly disciplined hitter. Left-handed especially, where he's got a little bit of an uppercut. If he can lay off that pitch from the belt up, he'll get some bases on balls. Three and one to Liriano. Chopper by Mattingly. It could be at least two. Winfield will chase it down in the bullpen area. Liriano will try for three. The ball off the wall. He comes in standing up with a triple. There's just one down. It rattled around off the pitcher's mound. Winfield tried to cut it off. It got by him. Mattingly having to play in with a bunt thread up. And off the line, and he hooks it in the right field corner. Well, one of the most exciting plays in baseball, certainly. Not the most exciting in this case, because there was no real throw at third base to challenge uh, Luriano. He was there comfortably. But you don't see triples like he used to. The percentage triples has really gone down the last 20 years. So again, that little bit of speed comes into play in a couple ways. The speed saying the possibility of a bunt. Mattingly had to come in. And then the speed, when the ball got by all the players and pitchers in the bullpen, presuming it's a triple and not a double in air. So it's Mosby now, who's 0 for 2 in the game, a foul out and the ground out. One strike to Lloyd. Mattingly cheating in this one-out situation, a little bit toward home plate. Anything at hard, even though they've got a two-run pad so far in this game, they may come home. Ooh. Mattingly with that great throwing arm. We've already seen him this season in the first and second bunt throw a runner out third base. He's an outstanding defensive player, the two best first basemen of the game. Right in New York City, Hernandez and Mattingly. Third with one out. Yeah. Mariano with a score making it five to four. RBI Mosby. His 84th of the year. And he had a good pitch. A sinking fastball low and away, and Lloyd went out and got it. It's straight away and started instead of trying to pull the ball to get the Jays a run closer. And Mosby, with that speed, a base-stealing threat at first base. And as a result, for the first time since coming on, for uh, starter Steve Trout, Charlie Hudson looks human. It's been unreal until this juncture. Lloyd has stolen 29, been caught seven times. The possibility still exists that all three outfielders, even though they've been rested some this year, the chance to have 100 RBI seasons. When did you see that last? Hernandez with one out. Mosby on first. Yeah, Lloyd needs, what, 16 now? Jesse needs 21, and of course George, long since there. 
This is the 142nd game of the year, so Jesse would have to get hotter than Lloyd. But he's more than capable of getting those RBIs for 100. What a difference a year makes, Tony. At this stage last year, the Blue Jays were 10 games off the pace. Today, they lead by one. tried to unload in a hurry and lost the strike zone. Out comes Lou Pinella. I believe Fernandez may have requested time or did he? And I don't think Larry Barnett yeah. gave it to him. Yeah, Larry Too Barnett late. shaking his head. Yes, no, he didn't give it to him. He requested and the umpire does not have to give it to him. There have been too many times in the last couple of years where pitchers are about in the middle of their delivery where they start and the umpire gives the requested time and Tony hold onto the ball and they catch their cleats. Here's what happened. Jimmy Williams here in the dugout was yelling time to Tony. Step out. And that's what that's why Tony put his hand up. He was going to call time. He didn't. And they allowed well, the pitch to stand. Well, Tony did. He raised his hand. But oh, yes. He, he raised his hand, but, but it, he Barnett's was not acknowledged. Give, Barnett's still got to give it to him. They even say That's now, right. even if you try and fade like you got something in your eye, we don't care. We're not going to get a pitcher hurt. I'm with them. Save their ball, misses again. We'll show you that first pitch to Fernandez. Watch his left hand. Larry Barnett was shaking his head in the affirmative as if to say we're going <laughs> to give it to you, but he didn't, and Tony had to jump back in. Sure did. But anyway, the count is two balls and no strikes with one out. Rocky Rowe at third, Tim Sheeta at second, Greg Kosk at first, and Larry Barnett behind the plate. This time of the year, they break up some umpiring crews, and in the heat of pennant races, they try and get different crews. Sometimes the supervisors and umpires rate them or the ratings that managers and general managers give. They may try and get better umpiring crews, more experienced, the games that are more meaningful at this time of the year. It could be trouble if fair. There goes. Oh. Just nice foul. Couple of feet. Two balls and a strike. Ricky Henderson looked like he was going to have a play, and then the ball kept slicing away. And if he can't get to it, nobody can. Yeah, we saw that game years ago where Earl Weaver, with cement blocks on that mound, pulled his team off the field. Forfeited the ball game. Some said he had cement blocks for a head, the height of a pennant race doing that. Two and one, one out, one on. Jays trail by a run. Last score we had, Milwaukee, Detroit in the third. It was scoreless. Terrell against Pasio. Milwaukee can score runs. Something in Detroit. Last of the Tigers 11 2 last night. A long at bat for Fernandez. It's still only two balls and a strike. Lloyd with about a six inch bigger lead, just the toe. Now he pulls back a little bit. He's not going. The force is removed. He's got a tag if he does. Double play. Who does it better than Mattingly? Unless it's Keith Fernandez. So, Jimmy Williams elects not to start the runner. 2-1 count. Mattingly steps on the bag and the tag is made by Meacham. But the Jays come up with a run on a triple by Liriano and RBI by Mosby to get a run closer. They're put out by Bobby Meacham on Mosby. We'll go to the sixth. 5-4 Yankees. You're watching the Bats. Blue Jays baseball on CTV. Jose Nunez. Relief of Cerruti. Sees the Yankee lead cut by a run. Face Ricky Henderson, Gary Ward, and Mike Pelliarulo. Ernie Witt stays in the ball game after lining out, pinch hitting for Moore to lead off the fifth. One strike to Ricky. Sharp.
sharp breaking ball from Nunez to jump way ahead. Look out. Sorry it slipped, Ricky. You know, when Bobby Cox was here, that was one of the things he liked to do the first time up to Henderson. Not try and hit him, but get the ball inside of one of the first pitches in his first at bat to straighten him up, get him out of that crouch. But Ricky, who admits he is the number one hot dog in all of baseball, says, ah, when I do that, I expect it. Maybe that's what got him into the crouch. Duck he, under it. He really can't get intimidated. That's happened before. See what I mean? Hit deep to left center field. You talk about a guy who's stolen 100 bases, got that kind of power. Perhaps only Eric Davis, who is still young and has not had a lot of years, can match that combination of speed and power that Ricky Henderson has. Well, Toronto collecting five homers of Yankee pitching yesterday, seeing how the other half lived. They've given up three New York homers today, but they have all been solos. And even though he got knocked down or all but knocked down an 0 and 2 pitch watch him admire this home run he learned a little this from Reggie Jackson deep into the left center field bleachers six to four Yankees will he be back or won't he he was a little evasive when Fergie asked a very tough question that Blue's been asked before he said he's not worried about it. I bet he is a little bit at home, and he's got to say he's not worried about it. But it's a very attractive, paying job, and it's really the most pressure-filled managerial job in all of baseball, more so than the Mets. One ball count could be extra bases. It will be off the bat of Gary Ward, who was homered, walked, scored two runs, and now he's going to try for a triple. Here comes the throw. He's safe. Once again, a relay man overthrown this time. Fernandez was overthrown. Liriano set up perfectly, but by that rainbow throw again, you had one longer throw and a short one. You'd like to have two medium distance throws because it's a lot quicker. Well, that's an exciting triple, an actual play at the bag at third. Bell and Mosby chasing it down. George grabs it. He sees Fernandez and Liriano, and then he overthrows Fernandez with an extra long throw, and it gave Ward that extra step with a sliding triple. Jimmy Williams out now as David Wells, the left-hander, comes on to relieve Nunez. Pagliarulo, the scheduled hitter, with one run home in this 6-4 ball game, and the Yankees threatening again. So oh, triple Nunez, chases Nunez. Nunez showed signs of brilliance again where he just blew Dave Winfield away. Struck him out to end the fifth, and then he knocked Henderson down with own two pitch, brushed him back, nothing else. Henderson home run, Ward triple. David Wells, who becomes very important with Jeff Musselman struggling with some shoulder tenderness. And Wells has been effective. What you're talking about now with the three left-handers in the starting rotation, you're talking about if Musselman's shoulder stays stiff, tight, sore, whatever it is, Wells becomes the left-hander out of the bullpen. So, Fergie Albert talked to David Wells before the ball game. Left-hander David Wells, what's been the difference for you? You were up with the Blue Jays earlier. They sent you back to Syracuse. Now you're back again, and you've won two ball games and lost one. Well, the difference is being in relief and uh, coming into a tight ball game and then pitching an inning or maybe two-thirds and then come back in the dugout and get runs. Your team doing that. So, you know, I like, I like the relief role a lot better than I did starting when I was up earlier because, you know, I just I would have to you know, save myself for later innings, and I was just, you know, wasn't really used to that in relief because I just go out there and just throw the ball as hard as I could. You've been used six times now, and are you surprised that Jimmy Williams has used you that much? Yeah, I am. I, you know, I just came up to expect to maybe get in one or two ball games, not as many as I have now. So, you know, I'm, you know, I'm happy with being here and it proves to them that you know I can pitch in, in a situation, and I've done it a couple times, like Dwayne Ward, and. Uh, you know, so I'm just very happy. Two balls, no strikes to Mike Pagliarulo with the infield in for Toronto. 
Nobody out. 2-0 count on Pags. Tigers take a 1-0 lead over the Brewers in the fourth. Mario falls behind 2-1 with the Cubs at the fifth. Lloyd's coming in. He better come hard. The infield, and it's tough. It bounces. The run will score. It's 7-4. Lloyd froze. May have taken a step back, and really with the infield in, it's a shortstop ball normally, but you pull the infield in, not only do more ground balls sneak through on the turf, but you're vulnerable to the little looper. And Lloyd couldn't get there in time after he froze. And Tony couldn't get there because he was playing in. And I don't know if we can notice it here on this side of the ballpark, but uh, they almost had a play on Pagliarulo, who was hung up between first and second. But unfortunately for Luriana right here, there was nobody over at first base. Fielder was in toward the mound. New York 7, Toronto 4. Rick Cerrone. Will he be bunting? There goes the runner. Pagliarulo fouled off. Boy, Lupinel is managing very aggressively. He has started runners all day long. Henderson a couple of times. Well, he's Hit better. run. Straight steal. Now with Cerrone a double play possibility. He starts Pagliarulo, who is not known for Vince Coleman type speed. Not really. One strike. Nobody out. Pitch out. He's not known for Gary Coleman type speed. One and one. The arm is there for David Wells. Can he throw strikes? He appeared in the eighth inning of the Friday game, struck out two and walked two. He struck out 10 coming in. There goes the runner again. Still could be two. Fernandez Liriano. Nice pivot by Nelson. And a good play by Tony. Some shortstop would not have fed that in a hit and run situation. Tony unloaded in a hurry. Liriano did a hop, skip, and a jump over Pagliarulo on a roll block. Turned it. The point you made was he doesn't have great speed, and that was the factor that gave the Jays a chance, and Fernandez did just start this but, double play to Luriano. But Pagliarulo was there in time to upset him, but Luriano, just with that balletic move, just avoided the roadblock. Good play by Nelson. He has shown some quickness. DP two out, 6-4-3. Now it's Meacham. Meets him with a big base hit to this point. Two men out after Henderson and Ward. Still second and third. Meacham singles to left field for two RBIs. Ball one. One and one. The Labatt's player of the game for New York will receive the Itachi DA400 compact disc player. Hitachi's complete line of CDs features advanced digital audio technology and the most comprehensive three-year warranty available. Hitachi, science for the senses. As well, an amateur baseball team will be the guest of the player of the game and Hitachi at a future game. Two and one now to Meacham, who has played around with switch hitting. Given up on it, started again. Now I believe he's only hitting right-handed. Fouled out of play. And a rain delay in New York with the Cardinals and the Mets. Want to go ahead and see the score from Shea Stadium, but it's supposed to rain much of the day in New York City. What a blow. Ron Darling out for the season. Yeah. Injured his thumb Friday night. Fractured or sprained thumb. Having a hard luck season to start with. He has that entire staff behind Mel Stottlemyre. Base set, center field. Mosby will make the throw, but Meacham will come in hard safely. Well, the Yankees are aggressive. You made that point earlier. They need wins in a hurry. Their fifth extra base hit. They've had three home runs. Lloyd shading Meacham over toward right center field. Then so the ball wouldn't go all the way through to the wall. He had to take an angle deep to left center field to cut it off and couldn't make the long throw. Jimmy Williams 
had his bullpen going. He said, "Hi, corn up now," and we could see him. Here comes Mark. Mark still feeling the effects. I think some people have said it changes delivery. I think it's more the innings pitch and the up and down last year. It was 157 innings pitch, and even though they said a lot of innings because of his delivery, it will not be hard on his shoulder, but I think his arm's been a little tired this year. And while Mark gets warmed up, we'll have another page in our SO scrapbook channel. The SO baseball scrapbook with Tony Kubek, Major League player and broadcaster. When figuring a pitcher's earned run average, it must first be determined what an earned run is. Basically, it's a run scored when the runner's advance is not aided by an error, pass ball, defensive interference, or obstruction. So, in figuring a pitcher's ERA, simply multiply the total earned runs by nine. Divide the result by the total number of innings pitched. Here's an example. 20 earned runs times nine equals 180. Divide 180 by the total innings pitched, say 54. 3.33 is the pitcher's earned run average. That looks like one of those skill <laughs> testing questions they give you when you win a contest. You don't get the prize until you multiply by 10, divide by 3, subtract 4, and, uh, and every get time the percentage. I, every time I try and do it, I still have to read about it and go point by point to I'm get sure it done. I'm sure you do, yeah. So Mark Eichhorn comes on, who off and on has shown traces of his brilliant year last year, but not consistently enough. Giving up 14 home runs. Again, out of the bullpen. A lot of innings pitched, 117, as you see. Look at the base on balls. Those numbers were so different last year, more than a strikeout per inning. Hardly any base on balls, very few home runs. Combination of last year's inning buildup, perhaps a little change in delivery. Maybe more so hitters seeing his delivery this year and the word getting around and adjusting, swinging at more strikes for the ball. Roberto Kelly, the kid, hasn't seen too many deliveries like this in the minor leagues. New York seven, Toronto four, we're in the six with two outs. Yankees with 11 base hits, Jays with five. strikes on the sweeping curveball. Now, Fan Appreciation Day on Sunday the 27th, thousands of dollars in Panasonic merchandise to be awarded to the lucky fans. That's always a popular event, but the Tigers are here to make it a greater bonus. We're trying to get Vice President Paul Beeston to give at least one of those boxes of smelly cigars away so we don't have to smell them tomorrow when we're downwind of them. I don't know if that'll be included though. Way outside, nice stop by Ernie. One and two, two outs. Meets him at second. Might be easier than giving him away. I'll tell you, if he gave that box of cigars away, or one of them, he'd get them back in such a big hurry. Detroit won, Milwaukee nothing in the fifth. Minnesota beating Cleveland three to two in the seventh. Cerruti started, Nunez in the fourth, Wells in the sixth, now Icorn. He got a breaking ball inside, but he got away with it. Mosby will call George Bell off. But the Yankees come up with a couple of more runs. A Henderson home run, a Ward triple, a RBI by Pelliarulo, and that's what the score stands at 7 4. As we go to the bottom of the sixth, you're watching the Bats Blue Jays baseball on CTV. Yankees, 7 runs 11 hits three home runs with that 7-4 lead George Bell Cecil Fielder scheduled to hit playing first base and then Jesse Barfield the third Yankee pitcher Trout then Hudson a man who wouldn't get along well with Jim Fergosi in a White Sox uniform Neil Allen a former Met a former Yankee former White Sox back of the Yankees ball one he pitched uh, two thirds of an inning scoreless, gave up one hit in Friday's game, but he did allow a runner he inherited score. He's a speck sort of pickup by the Yankees. Had him pitch, they liked it, so they signed him. 2 0. Oh. Willie Upshaw comes on deck. He'll be the pitch hitter for Cecil Fielder after Bal. Allen was an outstanding relief pitcher for the Mets. 
And then he was made into a start a hit deep to left field but off the end of the bat. It sounded good but sure didn't did. go well very far. Ricky Henderson's got it for the first out. With that little uh, move of his which I'm convinced someday is going to cost him a fly ball. Ah he loves it. I know he, he loves, loves it. But. He loves to get booed in the opposition ballpark. George got a little on the end of the bat and a little too much underneath it. Ricky says gotcha. Put mustard on that one. Ah, don't you like a guy with a little flair? Oh, I do. I do. But I'm just thinking in a key he situation. Shoulder. He drops one of those. Base is loaded. It's lights out. Fielder had a double for two RBIs in the first, then he struck out in the third. Two strikes to Willie Upshaw. One out, bottom of the six, seven, four Yankees. Too far outside. Neil Allen's always had a pretty good breaking ball and a fastball that's pretty crisp, but they say it is straight. Here's a starter. He's trying to mix in a few more change-ups. Relief, he may just go fastball curve. That was a little change-up. He turned it over and just caught the outer edge. So Willie couldn't get the bat off his shoulder. Two down. The Jays had pretty good success with Allen when he was with the White Sox, but today he's got their number so far with the first two hitters. So Larry Barnett, two strike counts. Tell Willie Upshaw too close to take. Barnett punches him out. Now it's Jesse Barfield. He's walked and popped out. Inside. Out of play. One and one with two down to Barfield. You catch you caught that ball? Fella from uh, Saskatoon. Ah, had a it. long drive. Yes, it is a long drive. <laughs> two balls and a strike to Jesse Barfield. Seven pitchers using this game, four by the Jays. Two and two for the Yankees with the acquisition of Gullickson from Cincinnati, and Gullickson was leading the National League in home run balls thrown. Gave him a good first outing. Planning for next year with him. They got Hudson. Maybe a starter. They got Trout. Now they get Allen, so they're starting to do things for next year. Pagliarulo to Mattingly. Three up, three down inning for Neil Allen. We'll go to the seventh here at Exhibition Stadium with the Toronto Blue Jays trailing the New York Yankees by three runs. Don Chevrolet will be back. You're watching the bats. Blue Jays baseball on CTV. 33-year-old Willie Randolph, a 12-year Yankee veteran, acquired way back when from the Pittsburgh Pirates. Starts it off for the Yankees, then Mattingly and Winfield. Trouble potentially from all three as Willie Upshaw stays in the game to play first base for the Blue Jays, who trailed the Yankees 7-4. to They just can't get it going, at least not since that first inning when they struck for three of their four runs. You think Willie and the Gator Ron Guidry couldn't write a book about what they've seen in New York? Oh, I guess. Long tenure. Hey, uh, Groover over to his left. Couldn't get back to the line. That's going to be a double for Randall. So Willie gets his first hit at three at bats along with a walk today. You don't like to see your bullpen banged around like this under any conditions. Not when the race is this close. And again at the All-Star game, the bullpen looked like it was very tired. It recovered a lot. And it may be getting tired and wearing down again. Of course, most teams are in that same boat. I mean, when you play 162, little nagging injuries crop up. Tiredness crops up. Doesn't get any better, does it, with Mattingly nope. standing in there. Then Winfield. And they're going to put him on. The pitch to Winfield. You know, Neil McCarl, one of the fine baseball writers in this continent, in the midst of conducting his annual poll of the best arm, the best hitter, the best defensive, the best this and that, 
And overwhelmingly, this is a surprise this year, Neil was telling me that the most dangerous hitter in the American League, he asked, who do you think? I said, well, Bell? He said, no. Evans? No. And what about it? Boggs? He said, nope. Matty Lee again. He said, he thinks it's reputation, but. Yeah. Well, tonight, second game, and Team Canada has to win it to keep the Canada Cup alive. They trail the Soviets 1 0 after that thriller on Friday. It'll be at Hamilton. You'll see it at CTV at 8 Eastern time. No need to remind you of that one. Might it be over today? If the Soviets and win. And if not, then it's Tuesday? And a showdown on Tuesday. Is Tretiak still in goal or no, is he over the hill retired. by this time? Finally, he was there forever. It's over the hill and down the road. Some back, we're back in the good old USSR. They said the Soviet Union could never replace him. Well, they have they got have. a couple of goalies. They got a guy from the Ural Mountains, of all places, who's played pretty well for them. Winfield and Ferrar, the third base coach, had a conference. And <laughs> it was got to be a decoy. I can't see them having Winfield butt in this situation. That's the story, 7-4 Yanks. Starting this inning like they have so many others, getting the first two He's men off. He's punting. Can you believe this? He pushed a pile, however. The guy's had about five straight years of 100 RBIs, and he's bunting. And a very strange number used to be worn by Casey Stengel goes down to the Toronto Blue Jays bullpen. 37. There he is. Dave Steve. When have you seen that? We have seen him as a pitch well, runner on occasion. It happened last year. It was threatened the last couple of years when he was struggling to try and write him. And after a couple of bad outings, it's not punishment. It's, hey, let's do what we think is best, as Jimmy said, and let's see if we can get you back on the beam. And maybe pitching in relief in a game like this with not much pressure, and there's going to be a lot of pressure the rest of the way, but if you're behind, you can get your slider back, you get your confidence back. Dave may not like it, but as Jimmy Williams said, what else is there that's better for the ball club? Making the most of what point, he's got. At this point. The 0-1 is inside, so it's 1-1 one one to Winfield. He's got Randolph at second. He doubled, Mattingly walked intentionally, and there's the bird's eye view of what's happening this afternoon. Birds are smart enough to get a good position right on the screen behind home plate. Tries to drop another one down, but it is fouled. So it is one and two now. So the Yankees, forgetting the individual aspect of the game, which they have so often concentrated on in the past, are playing team baseball now, and it's winning for them here this afternoon. As you say, Lou Pinello doing it very aggressively. He needs wins. Especially against the Torontos and the Detroits. He does not play the Tigers, though, the rest of the way. That what a goofy make a schedule, huh? Yeah. That's strange. They were through the second week in August. Right after the second week. Yeah. And like the National League, so they've got two fewer teams. All the contenders playing each other in the last couple of weeks, which is what you want for more stimulating baseball and fan interest. They're going to have to change in this league. He reaches for it. Well, there goes the bat out to third base. Well, they had a meeting this past week. I know scheduling was discussed, among other things, right here in Toronto, and I hope they improve on it next year. I, as I told you before, and said didn't really appreciate seeing teams back to back all the time. We saw so much of that this year. Here's Winfield for the second time entering the hammer throw of the old Highland Games down by the lake. And when he does that, he manages to stay alive and get the next pack and foul yeah. off a decent pitch. You know, I would think that the Western Division clubs, or most of them in the American League, would want to keep it the way it is because they get teams like the Yankees and the Blue Jays are building a big following. They get bigger attendance instead of playing each other more with Seattle against Oakland and some things like that. So I'm sure they'd be the ones who want to keep it just as is. Inside, two and two. And yet there's got to be a way we can accomplish both those goals. But the Western teams see the Yankees, the Jays, and the Tigers, the yeah. other top teams in the East, and yet maybe not have everybody play back-to-back. -back, bury it a little bit. Well, the way is to expand to two more teams, but what you've got with the dilution of talent at this point and pitching staffs the way they are, where are you going to get 20 more pitchers from? Yep, not enough now. Over to second for one. Winfield beats out the second half of that double play as Randolph takes third base. So Mattingly erased at second. Winfield on the fielder's choice remains at first base. Yankees hit into an awfully lot of double plays this year. This time Liriano doesn't turn it. He perhaps took that one extra step. Isn't it something when he had more time, he took too much that time? And 
before when he didn't have time with Pally Rulibera, he made such a quick pivot. And when he learned that he should make it as quick as he can, not rush it, every time, he's going to turn more double plays. He thought he had more time. He misjudged the speed of Winfield. He didn't get him. Anderson single came in the fourth. He scored. His home run came in the sixth inning. He is two for three this afternoon. The Yankees with three homers. They have all been solo shots. But they lead Toronto seven to four. In a game that is a key to Yankee survival and a key to the Blue Jays' first place aspirations. Whoa, way up it goes. What a takeout by Winfield. He is one of the best base runners in the game, and with those strides, he ate up a lot of ground. A little tricky hop to Gruber, which upset his timing, and he had to give that extra step to Winfield. But look what Winfield does to Liriano to force him to throw it wide and high. RBI. RBI for. Henderson, you can't anticipate the double play. And it's eight to four. The slide is what really created that. I don't know of any player, and I, that's why I always wonder how George Steinbrenner, for all those years, could have knocked David Winfield. I don't know anybody that plays harder than Dave does in the outfield and on the bases. Good job. Yeah, gives it his best every day. Gary Ward has had a productive afternoon. Single and double here. That's the easy part. He can hit for the cycle. He's done the tough part, the triple and homer. He has also walked. He scored three of the Yankees' eight runs. Well, I could bet. The odds are very high that Henderson is going. Anderson came into this ball game tied with Brett Butler of Cleveland and Mosby, each with 29 stolen bases. Reynolds leads with 52, and there are a lot of people. Reedus, Wilson, Molitor, Phil Bradley, and Tony Fernandez, all more stolen bases than Ricky. There he goes. Up and running, and they will not have him. So Ricky gets his second stolen base. You're seeing what kind of offensive force and how much he means to this offense. Even hitting fifth, he's now been on base three times, got a home run, a couple stolen bases. Fielder's choice with his speed, they couldn't turn a double play. Now he's got another stolen base in scoring position. I call that a decent day's work. Oh. I, I, perhaps it was Billy Martin who first said of Rick Anderson, he's the most devastating leadoff hitter in the history of the game. And I don't think there's any question. A guy who can steal like he has and still hit you all those home runs and drive in runs. When he plays, and some say when he feels like playing. Yes. Icorn's 1 2 offering. Leans back from that. It is 2 and 2 now. Well, if the Jays get hot, they trail 8 to 4 now. Could this, as you look at Henderson at second base, be another 15 14 game like that wild one earlier in the year? Still 1 0 for the Tigers over Milwaukee at County Stadium, 8th inning in the other game. Minnesota had a Cleveland 3 2. Did he go around? No. First base umpire, Greg Kosk. Ernie immediately reacted. One of the appeal play at first base, Chicago. Four manager. One. And that is postponed now. They have scrubbed that big game in New York. Who will be the manager for the Chicago Cubs? I thought he went too far on this. I don't know. Okay, that play is called so many different ways. The plane, the barrel of the bat broke the plane, the hitting plane, so you would think it was a strike. Doesn't matter now. It strikes out anyway. But the Yankees come up with another run. And they lead the Blue Jays 8-4. to four. Seventh inning stretch in Toronto and the Bats Blue Jays baseball on CTV. It's the Yankees lead Toronto 8-4. to four. Seventh inning at Exhibition Stadium getting late for the Blue Jays. At the bottom third of their lineup here. Leach, Gruber, and Witt, the scheduled hitters, off the left side, but Mullinex in the on-deck circle is going to hit for Kelly Gruber and remain to play third base, likely. It was 3-0 Toronto very quickly at the expense of starter Steve Trout. Then Charlie Hudson came on, did a magnificent job of shutting down the Jays while the Yankee bats slowly but very effectively went to work. And they've turned this one around. Neil Allen retired the side in his only inning, the sixth. 
You know, if you're in the position of the Yankees, you'd have got one thought in mind, and they haven't done it all year long, which is, hey, maybe we can, maybe we can, or our only hope is to run off eight, nine, or ten in a row. And this has been a silly season of streaks, which started with Milwaukee with those 13 in a row. Jays had a losing streak. They had a winning streak. It's happened with Baltimore. More so in the American League with this scheduling than in the National League. Now, but knows, that's what they're hoping for. He's got two teams to climb over. When they play each other seven times, you can't really gain a whole lot. If somebody wins all seven, you don't gain any ground there. And if they sort of saw it off back and forth, you get a new leader every day. But today, the Jays begin with a one-game advantage over the Tigers. Strike two to Leach, three and two. The Tigers leading Milwaukee one nothing. You know, I was thinking that St. Louis Cardinal Mets game was rained out. I don't know if there's an off day. I don't have the National League schedule. Does that mean they're going to have to play that game in St. Louis? They do have a series coming up there later. Finish yeah. the season with they three do. games in St. Louis. Maybe and, four. You know, with the scheduling, and I don't know. Unless there's an off day, they could get back to New York to play it. Tim Stoddard from the right side, and Pat Clements, the left-hander. And it's unlikely this late in the season there'd be a day off for both teams. Leach strokes it down to Willie Randolph. Up with it off the carpet. And that's the first out of inning seven. Mullenix now to hit for Gruber. Batting for the third baseman, Kelly Gruber. Number five, right. Baltimore Orioles come in tomorrow to Exhibition Stadium. They'll stay for three with the Jays. And a very important road trip to New York and Baltimore for Toronto will start on Thursday night over at Yankee Stadium. The Tigers, guess who they've got coming for dinner? They got the Brewers back for four in Detroit. Again, Willie Randolph goes to work. Identical play, two gone. Looks like Mark Connors, the pitching coach, has. Thought, taught a new pitch to Neil Allen. I didn't see that performance as I saw him having the White Sox this year in the past years. And Mark Connors sitting in the background there, standing with the sunglasses on. It looks like he's got him like almost a half screwball or a little sinker, taking something off it. He's had a couple left-handed hitters hit on the end of the bat. Well, he's shown good pitch selection, good variety. Instead of just throwing that hard fastball and the overhand curveball, looks like he's uh, turning it over a little bit. Here's Witt. He takes a strike. He's getting ahead of hitters. And he's getting rid of hitters in short order. Neil Allen is. I think there's a chance we may see Dave Steve coming into this ballgame with the fifth Blue Jays pitcher. He's up and throwing again. There's David. There's that curveball. Oh, he's always had Wicked, a good isn't one. it? Yeah. Takes a right angle right out in front of you. Strikes him out. They got to make it official. And the lob demandingly takes care of that. Another three up, three down inning for Neil Allen. Getting it done for the Yankees here. At the end of seven, they lead eight to four in the Bats Blue Jays baseball and CTV. Out of the bullpen he comes. An unusual role for Dave Steve, but it is believed to be his for the rest of the season. And who knows, he could become an ace out of that bullpen for the Jays in the final three weeks. Had to be kind of heartwarming. When he left the bullpen, he got a nice round of applause, and as soon as he was announced put in the game, some people stood for him. They haven't quit on him. Some people have written, only Dave Steve knows, that he quit over the last couple of outings. Some of the players, the Mullix goes into third now, Steve on the mound, but some players, oh, those unknown sources quoted in these columns where this guy told me that he quit. Yeah. But he gets back to Steve in time, covering the bag for the first out, getting Pat Yarulo. Well, he may not enjoy the role, but he certainly will learn to tolerate it if he gets some success here in the final three weeks. And of course, next year's a brand new story. So is full season. Well, the game is filled with front runners, and <laughs> you know, when you when a guy's down, he's easy to kick. And uh, like any other human being, you come out sometimes, uh, maybe you're a little tired, maybe the wife is nagging you, and you don't, whatever. And you don't produce, and all of a sudden they jump on your back. And Dave Steve's an easy target. I thought Wayne Parrish wrote a nice article about it. He, he covered a lot of different sides. He's got Serrano on one. 
If you look at Steve's uh, past performance against the New York Yankees this year, you go back to June and you see where he threw seven and two-thirds innings against the Yankees and allowed only two base hits. He was awesome that day. Frankie, there's no question that uh, in that stretch when he was winning so big after, you know, kind of a so-so start, he showed trace of the Dave Steve a couple of years ago. Went back more to what they call a National League-style pitcher, a power pitcher, fastball, slider, occasional change, instead of change up, slow curve, and using his fastball slider off that. He's pitching backwards. Saron pushes that near the seats and finds them. Well, when you consider what was expected of Dave coming into this year, very little. He has had a remarkable season. If it were to end right now, it would be a success for Dave Steve. But he goes on out of the bullpen. 45,312 today, the fourth largest this year, just a few hundred shy of yesterday. And for the series, 129,500 even to watch the Jays and the Yankees. A couple of years down the road with this competitive team of youngsters, we're going to see 3 million attendance here. And probably, I don't know if they could ever approach 4 million, but this is a big area to draw from. Size of the park may not allow that. Saron belts that into left field. So he's at first base with one. Oh, and the other one got right. him and got away. Now Jesse Barfield from right field tried to back the play up. George's throw way out of line. It'll be an error on him in left field. So George has had a little scuffle out there today. Sharon goes hard, makes a wide turn. George cuts it off. And it was Fernandez, the cutoff man. He missed him. Lurian on the bag. Willie stayed. He didn't trail the run. Now, there's a play where if there's a relay, Willie will trail it. But he couldn't do that in case there's a play at first base. So, Georgie, another error and throw. Yeah, there's an actual error to go with the previous metal error when he made a wild throw with no chance of getting the guy from third base. There's one of those. To to yeah. second. It's one of those if Jesse had reacted. It's unusual, but it's a thing for you kids to remember. You should come in from the outfield and back up those plays. It gives you an extra player. Jesse tried to, but the throw was so far off, he couldn't get to it either. Meet him today. The clutch single and double for the Yankees. Strokes it softly down to Tony Fernandez over to Wapshaw. So two gone in the eighth inning. In the top of the order, we find Roberto Kelly. I can't remember when I've seen him miss a ground ball. I mean, I, he has this year, obviously, with the, the low total of errors he had. But he's the kind of guy like Ozzy Smith. You say he never gets a bad hop. You see other infielders always getting crazy hops. Well, he plays his hops. We make sure that the rhythm is there and the timing. He's taking enough ground balls to get the big hop every time. Is one thing that he still has to resolve today, and that is his 18 game hit streak. He is mm -hmm. hitless this afternoon. He'll get a chance in the next inning. Steve got Paddy Rulo to tap out, gave a base hit to Cerrone, and got Meacham to ground out to the shortstop in his first relief appearance of the season thus far. He's got Kelly swinging on, too. There's a the good Dave Steve slider. Is it getting a little dark here to you? Yeah, clouding over a little bit more, getting late in the day. And bright sunshine has gone. Blue Jays batter will be on this weekend again. Next weekend on many of the CTD stations. So catch up on all the inside news of the Jays on the batter show. Just got a piece to stay alive at 0 2. A reminder again Wednesday, CTD will have the Orioles and Blue Jays for you at 7 30 Eastern Time right here in Toronto. Looks like Mike Boddicker will go against Jimmy Key. A good pitching match up there. 8-4 today, Yankees in command. Struck him out. So Steve gets the job done in the top of the eighth inning with those Toronto bats have got to get working here as they trail by four. Here's the pitch that he fuddled Ooh, Kelly. What a slider. He threw a couple of good ones at him. Dropped out of sight. You're watching the Bats Blue Jays baseball on CTV. Don Chevrier with Tony Kubek and Fergie Oliver back with you. Eighth inning, the Jays trailing the Yankees by four runs, and it'll be the top of the order. Lariano, Mosby, and Fernandez. As the skies get grayer, a little more menacing right now, Tony. Yeah, I keep looking at those flags on the right field scoreboard and see if the wind picks up a little bit or shifts. That may be what is blowing in, but so far, they're pretty calm. 
Trying to catch some NFL scores on the board there. Did I see the Tampa Bay beat Atlanta 48 to 10 in Ray Perkins' first game? Ooh, mm. I didn't notice it. And that rain, meantime, is reported all around this ballpark in uh, the Toronto area, but mercifully has not hit here yet. Mariano with a 1-0 count has had a couple of hits today, and he scored twice. Facing Neil Allen, who's been nothing short of brilliant since coming on as the third Yankee pitcher. Blue Jays have had just five hits so far in this game. Neil off the handle. He fists it down with the second baseman Randolph. Loriano gone here in the eighth inning. There's another one of those off-speed pitches that's with a little sinking action that he's got the left-handers to ground to Willie Randolph. So perhaps uh, Mark Connors has finally got Neil Allen to change speeds instead of being a one-speed pitcher. Hard curve and hard fastball. Yeah, he's used that to get three of the last four outs from Randolph. It was a stretch a few years ago, as I recall. In fact, I think he was with the Cardinals when he had a pretty good changeup, and then I don't know if he just lost it or gave up on it. Mosby, base hit RBI in the fifth inning. And really, the Blue Jays have not been heard from since then. This was the fourth run he brought home, scored by Nelson Loriano. Eight to four for the Yanks on a 13 hit assault. The Jays have had but five. And for a change, he's behind a hitter at 2 0 to Mosby. There's a strike, two and one. Now we'll look at the Labatt's player of the game prospects a little later on here. Loriano had a nice day, a couple of hits for the Jays. Cold foul by Mosby for the Yankees. Well, he got several candidates. He got three with home runs. Gary Ward homered and tripled. And walked, stole a base, scored three runs. Anderson's been in the middle of a couple of things, but at this point it appears like Gary Ward, huh? Looks that way. Another off-speed pitch. Didn't give much. Mattingly unassisted records the second out. So Tony Fernandez not only wants to keep the inning alive, but his 18-game hit streak. Tony today has walked, grounded out, and hit into a double play. Short stop, number one. He's three shy of a club record. Would like to keep it going here, and the Blue Jays' chances going in the late innings against the Yankees. A big thing for this Toronto ball club down through the rest of September and early October is going to be to gain that killer instinct. Even the division-winning year, they struggle at the end. Doyle Alexander finished off the Yankees the seventh and second last game of the season. Last year, near the end, they struggled quite a bit. I think they're a little more seasoned. They know more about themselves and the league. They're more mature, obviously. They've got some more veterans on the bench. And you hope that the Blue Jay fan that they can, you know, today's an example. You've got a three nothing lead and you say, hey, get Trout out of there early. Let's polish them off. And the Yankees did come back. Well, they hit a solo home run. Okay, that's only one. They got another. Well, it's now three two and then Everything broke loose. Two strikes to Fernandez. And he takes a third. That could take care of the hitting streak as Tony goes over the day. So Allen, a very impressive relief pitcher now, has retired nine straight. And the White Sox may be wondering why they let this guy go. Eight complete on the Bats Blue Jays baseball at CTV. Only it's sprinkling here yet, just a uh, Pedestrian Lamont start for the parking lot here among many people this afternoon as the top of the ninth inning finds the Yankees ahead eight to four. Dave Steve working for the Jays at a good eighth inning. Pitches here to Willie Randolph and starts him with a strike. Well, if Dave Steve was irritated by being put in the bullpen, he hadn't shown it the way he's thrown today. No. Thrown some good sliders. He's gone out to Randolph work. to go out to pitch a good sinker down low in the strike zone. He is, his job. he is competitive enough to want to battle his way back into the starting rotation. Another good slider. You know that. One God and the Yankee nine. Yeah, people have questioned Dave's attitude his first few years here. I don't think that's been a question for him over the last couple of years. He's gotten along very well with his teammates. Overall, you're always going to have little disagreements. One thing they will never take away from that intense desire to be a good player. And right now if this is an irritant by him going to the bullpen I think it could serve a very good purpose and perhaps that's why Jimmy Williams is doing it. 
as he's tried to do by resting Barfield, maybe yeah. giving him time to reflect. And Jesse's bounced back well Jesse's, after those days off. Well, Jimmy's saying, is, okay, now you reprove yourself. You prove to me that you deserve to be back in the start rotation. Mattingly sprays that to Bell in left, but he's got room for the second out. So Steve just trying to hold the line right here. Much of the Yankee damage has been done with an 8-4 lead on 13 hits. At last report, Tigers led Milwaukee 1-0 over County Stadium. That's the last we've seen. Hey, four runs is that not that much to overcome. Not the way, you know, Dave Rigetti has been warming up. Don't know if he's coming in. Allen has pitched such a strong they in relief, there's Rigetti, but Rigetti's given up a lot of leads this year. Unlike last year, the second half, he was all but unbeatable, unhittable. So he was worn out from last year's record-setting pace. And you get into the Yankee bullpen, you never know. The guy's coming up, Al, Upshaw, Barfield scheduled. Who knows? Well, unless, and he hasn't had many innings lately, unless uh, Allen has tired and run the course. I wouldn't want to go away from him if I were no. Lupinella, but that could be the case. Stopped by Mullenix. He guns him down. Well, Steve gets it done again. Three up, three down. Retiring three tough ones. Randolph, Mattingly, and Winfield. So the Jays, one more gasp coming. On the bats for Jays baseball at CTV. There's a few thunder clouds roar around Exhibition Stadium in the distance. The Blue Jays come to the ninth inning, trailing the Yankees by four runs. This one turned around and got away on them after a 3 0 start on the first. But they got some bats here to get back into it. Bell, Upshaw, and Barfield schedule. Well, Neil Allen certainly hasn't shown any vulnerability, and sometimes his control leaves him, but not today. He's been coming out there and just throwing strikes with the hard breaking ball, with that change up, the occasional fastball. He has faced the minimum and retired them in order in the sixth, seventh, and eighth inning. See if George is up there. He didn't call it a strike, did he? he yeah, did. I think so. As he leaned back from it. Now Bell smashes that to left field for an inning opening single. His second hit today. Hope springs eternal down by the lake. Where do you pitch this guy? Some teams try and get the ball up and in on him. You take low and away pitches the opposite way. And he's oh, what a great natural talent. George Bell with a bat in his hands. Mattingly playing behind him at first as you see. And it's high to Upshaw. Interesting to see if a little pressure is put on Neil Allen right now, if he can respond. Get the necessary out to close this game. Some say that's been a problem for him in his recent career. It's a good solid strike. One and one. It's a lot easier to pitch when you're three or four runs down. You got a four-run lead where you can be nice and easy. Get a few base runners, put a little pressure on, then you find out. Blue Jays may do that. We'll see. Strike two. One and two. How in the world with that kind of stuff can this guy have been shuttled around to so many different teams? You really wonder, don't you? And he just doesn't do it consistently. Shot takes high, two and two. Bell's at first base to start the inning. Jays needing four runs to pull even with the Yankees. George Bell already alerted by Billy Smith at first. Don't get double off. Your run means nothing. Make the ball hit the ground. Popped him up. Meacham going back will give way now to the left fielder, and Henderson makes the catch for the first out. Right fielder, number 29. Jesse Barfield. Barfield. Over two and a walk today. Reminder, Baltimore and the Jays Wednesday on CTV and on Sunday at Yankee Stadium will have the Jays and the Yanks for you a week from the day. Looking forward to going to the zoo? Yeah, it's always fun up there. Once you're in there, getting to and from the ballpark isn't a lot of fun sometimes. Not my favorite neighborhood. 1-0. 
course, you're so familiar with the surroundings there. You breeze in and out like you used to do on the place. Yeah, I used to. <laughs> A lot of the single players just stay right up the hill. Grand Concourse. Oh, yeah, the old the days. Ballpark, yeah. Stop at the local deli. It's all a different story now. Blue Jays need a big hit right now to kind of shock Neil Allen. Maybe even force Rigetti into the ball game. Boy, keeps throwing those strikes at such a variety of pitches. The fastball, the good breaking ball, he'll change speeds on you. How is it Roger Angel, one of his great books and one of the great baseball writers, described a good curveball like Carl Erskine. He said it was like putting a dime into a pay telephone and watching it disappear and drop down. Yeah. That's what his curveball looks like today. Oh, meets you oh, right. oh, He's got oh. nothing. Over to George the George watch out. goes down. George got away with one with four runs down. He threw a little shock into John McClure and the third base coach when he saw Bell coming four runs down with the ball just trickling away from each of them and then he flipped it away. So it's still alive. Well, it won't happen today, of course, but that's the kind of play that has sent Meacham down to Columbus in a hurry. You know, there's a possibility they could give him two errors. An error for the ground ball, not getting a runner at all. Then another error for throwing it away, allowing Bell to go to third base. We'll see what the official scorer says. So we may see Dave Rigetti, who's loose if Lou Padella needs him. Last year, the second half yep. after the All-Star game, I think it was something like 29 safe possibilities for Rigetti, and he converted on 28 of them. That's how awesome he was the second half. But going for that record for saves for a season may have taken a little bit of the edge off that lasted right into this year. Right in this ballpark last year when he threw the ball over the right field fence was when he kicked in and really had a red hot second half. Allen did a good job. Yes, he did. And Should've this been out of it. The obvious move for Lou here with Leach, Mullenix, Witt, left handed hitters coming up. But we've talked about it before. This time of year, there's a bigger bench for Jimmy Williams. He could provide some alternatives here in a pinch hitting sense. Rigetti, seven wins, four losses. He has 26 saves, but his control has not been good. 42 bases on balls and 82 and two-thirds, and the strikeout for any pitch has gone down. ERA higher. He just lost, it with, as they say, a lot yard off his fastball, and his slider hasn't been as hard either. This is not his favorite ballpark. Remember, he tossed one over the outfield fence in frustration, and Friday, upon losing the game, went in, and... Knocked a few things over, made a ruckus in the Yankee locker room. But you're right, wildness has cost him this season. That's when George Steinbrenner had an inclination to find him big money until Lou Pinella made the comments to the writer there. He said, I like what I saw. He said, I like that he got mad and showed that he really cares and let his frustration all come out in that toss over the right field fence. George said, oh, well, that's okay then. <laughs> <laughs> If you say that's, so, Lou. But that's when Lou and George were on good terms. Yes. Don't know what the terms are now. And any day now, you, for the two losses in the first two games in here, you keep waiting for George Steinbrenner to issue a vote of confidence to his manager. 1-1, the Brewers tie it up in the bottom of the eighth inning at County Stadium. And, of course, the Jays looking for more Milwaukee support this afternoon to, they don't pull this one out against the Yankees, at least retain their one-game advantage. We'll see Garth Ors as, as a pinch hitter who got a big base hit in the Milwaukee series in a pinch hit situation. And Jimmy Williams put it in, a double in the left field corner. Another veteran can come off the bench. Orge hitting for Rick Leach. That is the DH spot. First occupied by Beniquez, then Leach, now Orange. And we have some very, very black clouds coming over the ballpark now. Yeah, if the Jays are going to rally, let's hope they do it with haste. Because it looks like about sundown here. He loved to jump on the first pitch. Takes it high, ball one. That has been part of Rigetti's problem, getting behind hitters. Well, you got the tying run and Manny Lee in the on-deck circle now. Orch down to Randall. Oh. He made sure of that. Catches that on the fly. Good base running by Jesse. Billy Smith put him in his head. Your run means nothing. 
and it's hard because he's saying get a good jump to try and break up a double play but don't get doubled off and this is a hard judgment call for Barfield if he short hops that ball he can go 4-6-3 so Jesse did a nice piece of base running right there so Manny Lee with two out represents the potential seventh run of this game for the Jays they trail 8-4 Ernie Witt on deck, but this is the last life for Toronto right here with Lee. Don't forget tonight, 8 o'clock Eastern Time, CTV brings you showdown two of the Soviets and Team Canada from Hamilton. 8-4 here, 1-1, Tigers and Brewers in Milwaukee. And that is a first pitch strike to Manny Lee. He has not seen very much action since coming back from Syracuse. Jimmy has got, albeit from the right side, a rusty hitter to face Rigetti. Manny Lee, one for one, is a pinch hitter this year. Two strikes to him as he fouls that offering off. The interesting what happens with Manny Lee during the offseason. He, you know, has so many teams looking for a shortstop that can play every day. The Yankees may be one. The Houston Astros have tied a lot of people there since Dickie Thon left. He has some value. Sure, he'd be very attractive. I, mean, I don't 19. know if they're going to trade him or not. I mean, with Fernandez there, and he's nice to have as a backup guy. Boy, uh, he's a pretty valuable commodity, Manny Lee. Switch hitting middle infielder. Just missed, one and two. Dodgers are looking for a shortstop. Dodgers looking to rebuild. There's a crowd reacting to the 1-1 score we told you about, eighth inning at Milwaukee. Lee keeps it alive. Lacing into the left field. The fifth run is home, brought in by George Bell. Don't go away. The last two days hero is coming up right now. He represents the tying run. Manny Lee keeps it alive. Now again, Williams makes the right move. He's got a lightly used little hitter coming in with not a great deal of power, but he punches it in. With the dark skies around, could this be lightning a third time for the Yankees in the person of Ernie Witt? Rigetti knows he's got a hot hitter to face to get out of this one. Witt represents the time run. And Jimmy knows, and I don't know if he's told Ernie, he's a veteran, he doesn't have to tell him. Up until two strikes, we want you to get a fastball you can rip out of here. And that's on Ernie's mind. Strike one. Eight five Yankees. Strike two to win. How many times have we seen this Toronto team down to two outs and two strikes bounce back? Jimmy Williams has used 19 players in this game. He wheels them around, doesn't he? Woo. Close, but it's ball one. What a tough slider to take. Huh? Oh, I'll say. I almost expected Barnett's right arm to go up and bring these proceedings to a halt but it's alive they yell from the Yankee duck on Barnett and look over say the ball's away outside but Pinello was arguing Pinello was arguing for this pitch not the last one he hopes he'll get a close call from Barnett on this one popped up and out of play now a few flashes of lightning in the distance yeah If Bernie gets into one, it would certainly light up the balance of this crowd, which is now sparse by comparison to the 45,000 plus who came in. The Jays go over the 2.4 million mark in attendance today. But the diehards hang in, hoping. Getty gets it 
gets it done. Yesterday's hero cannot do it today. And oh, the wicked Yankees slider. hang on. Mm. They forced. The Blue Jays did. But now they bring Rigetti in, and he threw a great breaking ball. Might have been ball two, but Ernie couldn't hold up on it. And the Yankees salvage a win here, having been beaten the first two days in this series. They win it today by an 8-5 to five score, coming from behind to do it over the Blue Jays. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball from Toronto on CTV. It began with the weather. Both very promising, but both deteriorating rapidly. And as of the moment, the Blue Jays have a half game lead over the Tigers, but the issue in Milwaukee is not settled yet. 1-1 in the ninth inning now. The Yankees, at least temporarily, are six games off the pace. Milwaukee six and a half back, and they are just trying to beat these contenders and get as close as they possibly can. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on CTV. Labatt's Blue Jays baseball has been brought to you by Esso. Stop in and fill up with the no-trouble gasoline. And by Labatt's Blue, the proud sponsor of the 88 Olympic Winter Games. This has been a special presentation of CTV Sports, produced in association with TV Labatt and protected by copyright. Any use of this telecast without permission is prohibited. The final score, the Yankees beat the Blue Jays 8-5. to The winning pitcher, Charlie Hudson. And the loser, John Cerruti. The Labatt's players of the game for Toronto, Nelson Liriano, who will receive the new Cannon EOS. And for New York, Neil Allen, who will receive the Hitachi DA400. As well, two amateur baseball teams will be the guests of Nelson Liriano, Cannon, and Hitachi at a future game. Our next CTV telecast, Wednesday, September the 16th, when the Blue Jays will host the Baltimore Orioles. Check your local listings. An old feud between two comedians is no laughing matter. In fact, it could be deadly tonight on Murder, She Wrote. And next, the finest writers in the world compete in the Spruce Meadows International.